great stuff from our number one prospect of 2023, Najee Lopez. He certainly has a bright future ahead of him. All right, now we show you the number one prospect for 2023. Let's get to the podium of the best fights in our Wednesday Night Fight Series here on Pro Box TV. Number three was a super middleweight bout in February between Manuel Gallegos and Richard Van Sicklin. Probably, what do you remember from that fight between Gallegos and Van Sicklin? Uh, you know what? I remember a, a lot of action. I, Van Sicklin is a guy who sort of uh, overachieved every time he came on here. You know, people sort of were counting him out in his career, and he came on. And this was, uh, I believe, the second time we had him on yeah. Pro Box TV. And Gallegos was known as a guy who was a high-volume puncher, a guy who forces you and sort of forces you to fight and sort of suffocates you. But Van Sicklin was just crafty enough and fought at a high pace enough to keep up with Gallegos was just crafty enough, and, and it was made it a, that kind of back and forth fight where no one could really take the, the, the full advantage. It was, it was a really good fight to watch. Yeah, it certainly was a great one. Number three on the list. All right, let's bring back in our Hall of Famer and one of the great contributors here on Pro Box TV, Tim Bradley. Tim, what did you make and what do you remember from that Gallegos Van Sicklin fight? Look, what I noticed about all these fighters or these fights, these great fights on Pro Box is, is that. You typically have an athletic fighter or a technical somewhat boxer and he versus and he he's matched up against a pressure fighter, someone that can punch a little bit, someone that basically uses not a whole lot of skill, but a whole lot of effort, a whole lot of determination, a whole lot of will and a ton of pressure and throws a ton of punches. And another thing that I noticed that the technical boxer. Through all, all these matches we're going to mention today, he didn't have a consistent and effective jab. You know, he used this jab as a range finder most of the time to be able to set up his backhand. And that allowed the pressure fighter to come in through that front door and put more pressure on him and get him in those di those uh, disadvantageous positions. So, um, but as far as the fight goes, again, you had uh, Van Sicklin, who was the athletic fighter, used his legs well in spots. Um, I thought he landed the cleaner, more effective punches throughout the night. However, uh, Gallegos was a beast, man. You know, he was not going to be detoured uh, whatsoever. He took, he took as, he, as it came. He pressed forward. Um, you know, it was a, I thought it was a great, exciting fight, man. It really was. I, I really enjoyed actually re-watching the fight. I think I watched it twice already, but a very entertaining fight. Both guys, you know, uh, you know they're put in these situations to where they're mu they must win. So that's the reason why you get great fights. You know, when you're put in those situations where you're betting on yourself and you must win these type of fights, you're gonna get you're gonna get the best from both guys. And I think we got the best that night for both guys. So, yeah, Chris, Chris, you were there ringside with Paulie. What uh, what were your impressions of that fight? Well, my illustrious partners, former champs Tim and Paulie, put put it together beautifully in terms of technique. I want to talk about what I remember from the fighter meetings with these two guys. Mm. These guys were mm. both very confident. Very, very confident coming in to win. And that just speaks volumes to what Pro Box TV is all about, the kind of fights we put on. We always say, we, we, you know, we joke, but we're not joking. There is no A and B side. Right. And both guys are coming to win. And in this case, this fight, that was exactly what happened. Both those guys had their game plan. They are both very, very different in terms of technique and in terms of personality, um, in terms of approach. And like, like you both said, it was athleticism versus grit. And it just, it just made an all-time great fight. And I'm happy that it's, that it's on this list. It's very high on the list. And uh, it was one of those fights where... When the draw came, I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, I'm not mad. I hate draws, but I'm not, I'm not mad. It was, it was yeah. that kind of fight. And, and when you watch those fights, you, sometimes you're like, ah, oh, it's, it's really, man, it's bad that somebody really has to lose tonight because yeah. so, these guys are giving so much of themselves, you know? But can, uh, can we have pro box? Can we have pro box? Can we can we seriously get rid of draws? Like I don't understand <laughs> yeah, the yeah. draw in boxing. Can we get rid of that? Let's throw an extra round. Who do you, let's throw who do you extra punish? Round yeah, yeah do, I would do the extra round, man. I would do the let's extra round. Yeah. Yeah. I would that pro box, I would man. I would do the extra round. I think that would be cool. Because, Sudden death round, because, winner, winner take all. Because draws when somebody has to just lose, it's harsh. But then if both guys kind of get that extra round, they kind of go into it knowing, okay. To draw, but I gotta win this round and I win the yeah. fight. You know, yeah. so it's like exactly. it's not it's not so harsh to then to go that to then lose that way. At least there's a there's a recognizance on on the part of both guys. Uh, but when it's a draw and somebody just has to win, like, I, I I feel bad for guys, man, because it's like oh, it's right there. But man. that extra round champs, is I'm, a great I'm, idea, I'm, champ. I'm gonna, because, I'm gonna, Tim, I'm gonna because, draft it up. We're all gonna sign <laughs> yeah. up. I'll sign it. I'll sign yeah. it. Man, uh, draft it up. As for Tim Bradley, 
<laughs> there, there will now be an extra round in the event of a draw. draw. I, I, would love, I would love that. Fans, let us know what you guys think in the comments, yeah. man. Think about um, it. Every other sport, I mean, you don't you don't end the match on, on a draw. You don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. any other sport, you know, you get a little extra overtime, you know, and, and then we find football, basketball. I mean, you name it, you know, but in boxing, we get a draw. Like, come on, man. Get out of here. Let's go one extra round. And, and if we like, need to go another one, do another one. That's, Trust that's, me, you can get the best from each guy. That, yeah. That's really sudden death, man. Yeah, you know, that's is, like, that's a, or or a shootout, you know? Like you have a one-round shootout, man, where you just go at it. Well, you know? in, terms of, in terms of optics, I don't think we knew sudden death, but we <laughs> yeah. have a different yeah. name. Yeah. 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 Got a different name. Well, you well, know what this means, right? They well, just need to... Do it again. Have another fight. It ended in a draw. Bring it back on our air. That, yeah. that fight was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Another shot. Another matchup between Gallegos and I, I, Van Sickle. Listen, right? when Quick, a fight is that good, you know, even if they they go in other directions, which they since have, you're gonna. They, there's always a, a rematch that can always come back exactly. around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the fights are are so good, and we've seen that in the past. But sometimes a, a rematch, guys go different directions after a, a, an exciting draw or an exciting, exciting close fight, but then. Even years will pass, but they'll go yeah. and come back and see each other again. This is why you got to download the app, man. It's free. There you go. It's free on your from at, at your app store, on your Play Store, all that all the places where you get and get the app. It's free, guys. Just That's download it. the app. This is exactly why you got to download the app, man. Look, these the, this list of fights, any one of them is must see TV. Absolutely. And uh, this uh, number three, we hope uh, you guys go back and take a look at it. To our main event of the evening, and I can confirm it is scheduled for ten rounds. Super middleweight fight contracted at 170 pounds. Manuel Gallegos, 20 and 1. Richard Van Sicklin, 13 and 0. Last time we saw him, he defeated Naji Lopez's older brother, Hakeem Lopez. Yeah, and he came in as an underdog. Hakeem Lopez uh, was a prospect here we had here at Pro Box, living uh, on, on campus. But you know, Van Sicklin came in with upset-minded. And uh, was able to, you know, do good work in a good competitive fight that gave good action, good give and take action. Van Slickland was able to take control of the fight and uh, come into the hometown and get the upset win. Yeah, Van Sicklin is one of those guys. He's he's a great athlete. He came from another sport, started boxing somewhat late, and uses that athleticism to his advantage. I mean, he's he's got good power, explosiveness, athleticism, um, coordination, yep. and character. He's got a lot of character too to be able to you know come into these hostile environments, tough situations, tough opponents, and not be intimidated and, and come in and, and do what he does. Oh yeah, he seemed very comfortable at the fighter meetings uh, yesterday about about coming here, and he, he knew what he had in front of him, but he said he had a great camp and, and he's ready to go out there and perform once again. So it is Richard Van Sicklin and Manuel Gallegos. Guys, let's break it down first of all for 13 and 0 Richard Van Sicklin keys to victory. Lateral movement, you know, the, the champ Algeri said was talking about his uh, athletic ability. Well, lateral movement helps out when you have athletic ability. Win the battle of the lead foot. He's a southpaw. There's always that battle when it's a southpaw versus right-hander. Take advantage of the defensive holes Gallegos will give you. The Gallegos is, is an aggressive guy, likes to bring it. So a lot of times, like we talked about earlier with Marcus Bayer, when you have guys who like to bring it, they sometimes will give you opportunities to hit them as well. Richard Van Sicklin looking to upset another emerging talent and that emerging talent is 25 year old Manuel Gallegos 20 and 1 17 finishes Chris is keys to victory now at the at the opener we called them pressure 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 fighters yes. pressure cubed is Manuel <laughs> Gallegos so effective aggression is a big part of his his game plan and I say effective because you got to land the shots you can't just be aggressive and get hit on the way in also mix up the right hands you got a southpaw in front of you he's got a great overhand right but listen the straight right hand is going to be the better weapon to set up that big shot and those hooks off that and then also don't smother your offense Gallegos has a tendency to be so offensive minded he gets over his skis so to speak and falls in into shots and leaves himself open for, for his opponent's offense. First fight outside of his home country in Mexico. Official introductions from Mark Lichtenfeld. Bail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Ten rounds in the super middleweight division. Damas y caballeros, este es el evento principal. Pelea por atado a días asaltos en peso super mediano. Los jueces, your judges, Jed O'Connor, Tina Griffith, 
and Brian Gary. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue with gold, in la esquina azul con pantalones azul y dorado, pesando 169.4 libras, weighing in at 169.4 pounds. His record, 13 wins, no losses, with six wins by knockout. Esta invicto, 13 victorias, zero derrotas, con seis por la vía, de, por la vía del knockout. From Seattle, Washington, Richard, the Vibes Van Sicklin. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with white, in la esquina rojo con pantalones negro y blanco. Pesando 168.8 libras, weighing in at 168.8 pounds. His record, 19 wins, one loss, 16 wins by knockout. Con record, 19 victorias, una derrota. Con 16 por la vía del knockout de los Moches, Sinaloa, Mexico. Jim, we've got trunks a little high, so everything I consider legal up here, everything I consider legal up here. Jim, you know what time it is. Fight hard, fight clean, touch him up. Ah. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Sinaloa's Gallegos, 25 years old. Seattle's Van Sicklin, four years his elder. Gallegos will have the reach advantage. All right, Red Corner, you ready? Blue Corner, you ready? Bail! Here Bro. we go! It's time to fight! Van Sicklin, the southpaw, comes out orthodox. Dark blue and gold trunks. White trunks with some black trim for Manuel Gallegos. Hey, a lot of guys come out in surprising stances tonight, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Makes our job a lot harder. <laughs> right. There you go. You're back to southpaw, Van Sicklin. Yeah, it didn't work out well. He got hit with two hard jabs from Gallegos right off the bat when Van Sicklin was in that orthodox stance and went back to it. Oof. One thing about Gallegos, he throws everything with bad intentions. Temperament of that of a movie villain in a slasher film. One of our fine researchers broke it down like that. And I guess that's also pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, pressure cubed. I like how uh, yesterday in the fighter meeting, Gallegos, who was the taller guy, who told us that he was going to use his height and box on the outside, as if he expected us to believe him. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when he said that, I'm like, oh, these guys are savvy. They, know, they don't want to tell us nothing. Because I've never seen that from any of the fights that I watch from Gallegos. He, Gallegos, he does not fight tall, even though he's 6'2 and has a 77-inch reach. He's also put out press releases calling out the chosen one, Edgar Belonga. Oh, good body, body shot. Body shot by Vibes. Yeah. Double shots to the body. Good little uppercut there by Van Sinclair. I'll tell you, Van Sinclair and Lee Hakeem Lopez found a sneaky uppercut. Good combination in return by Gallegos. This fight could Ooh. start to draw itself into a real battle of attrition. Yikes. This, these guys are throwing big shots. And Van Sicklin proved on that night against Hakeem to be a oh. follow, but a body shot. Good shots there by Van Sicklin. Sneaky shot. And that was something I was going to say. Van Sicklin can punch, too. He doesn't have a bunch of knockouts on his record, but that left hand is hard, and Gallegos needs to be trouble. He needs to take caution not to get hit with those big shots on the way in. The constant switching of Van Sicklin is a little concerning. With the athleticism that we pointed out at the top of the show, and from the theme of the night, not overly surprising, I guess. I'll tell you one thing, though, he, he, it makes him a little bit more difficult to time than Gallegos. You, like you mentioned earlier, champ, you know, Gallegos throws everything with hard intentions. It can make you dangerous, but it can also make you easier to time when you throw everything the same way. Yeah, there's no change up in speed from Gallegos. It's hard or harder. 
more of Ben Sigmund. Maybe a little less busy, but seems like he's making his shots count. He doubles the left hook there, and the second one lands pretty cleanly. Yeah, I don't think Van Sicklin's missed a punch yet. Oof, good body. That one didn't miss from Gallegos. Put it in. Right. Good left hand there. Van Sicklin in between landing the cleaner shots. Important, because even the body shot there taken on the arm by Van Sicklin. All the fights have been great so far. This one might as well just fit the bill. Pedro Montiel, third oldest family of five. The brother of Fernando Montiel, the five-time world champion in three different weight classes. The corner of Van Sicklin, Ricardo Acuna, they've been together for the past 11 years. Boxer, 13 and 0, round two, after a good start to our main event. Dark blue and gold for Richard Van Sicklin, Gallegos to the body. White with the black trim, the answer from Van Sicklin. Oh! And Van Sicklin, a little, little, bit, a little bit of a showboat after. Oh! I'll tell you what, Gallegos is a tough guy, but I'll tell you, if he keeps getting hit clean like this, he's gonna put himself at risk. He's taken three or four really big, nicely timed bombs from Van Sicka, and it seemed like they, they they stunned him, at least for a moment. Yeah, I mean, he might have a good chin, and he's shown to have a good chin, but you can only, how many are you going to take before you make an adjustment? Van Sicka is fighting very smart. He knows he has aggressive man in front of him. He knows he's a guy Another who has defensive lapses, and you can hit him while he's trying to throw his big heat firepower. So Gallego's fighting harder, and some of the shots get through, but Van Sicklin fighting smarter. We'll see how that wears. That's a fight where he's on, or who wears who out by their choice of style. Gallegos, the closer he gets to his opponent, some of the breakdowns, some of the so-called experts in X's and O's have said he gets a little reckless. How you, man? Some good trading there, too. Man, these guys can fight in a phone booth. Pro Box TV, your boxing Whoa, channel, move, again move. with the win. Everything's delivered tonight. Main event, round two, scheduled for 10. Yeah, we saw a classy, high-level boxing match last fight. Now we're seeing a high-level slugfest. One thing about Ben Sigler, he, he, right right he commits right himself. I mean, yes. but Gallegos throws to the body, he's busy to the body. Well, ben Sigler mixes up his punches, but when he goes to the body, he, he commits. See, this is what I talked about with Gallegos getting over his skis and smothering his offense. He gets Van Sicklin on the ropes and he falls in and doesn't get any of his power shots off. Which may be the same point that was made about him closer he gets, he gets a little reckless. Gets. Yeah, I mean, reckless and smothering and, and just he, he's, he's handcuffing himself. All kinds of stuff was going on in there. Headbutts, elbows, <laughs> body shots, head punches. I, was, I got lost in there myself just trying to watch it. Six round fights that the Brazilians thought were eight rounds. Oh, good, good shot, little uppercut there by Van Sicklin. Why do you have headbutts going on in there too, guys? I mean, and no one, crazy. no one cares either. No one's complaining. How do you coach a guy like Gallegos? You just unleash him. Just let him go. Get him. Van Sicklin, what a butt! What butt? Ten seconds. Like you said, the mindset of Van Sicklin, you know, he's in with a, a tough, rough guy. He's smiling, shaking his head. Yeah, both guys in a tough, tough fight, but both guys seem to be enjoying it. When I asked him about the win over Hakeem Lopez, he said, yes, it is a confidence builder, but we weren't surprised. And he promised that he would be better tonight. Six 
months since we have seen him. Looks better to me. The way he's been picking his punches, I, I, I've been I've been impressed with the shots that he's been so precise with, landing to the head and to the body, picking smart shots rather than just going tick for tat with uh, with guy eagles. Okay. Keep going straight. Okay, for second round, start picking him up. Okay, you understand? Okay. Yeah, let me keep. know. Let me know what's happening. Yeah, keep it. Keep. Talk about Gallego has been busier, but Van Sickle has been the better timing guy here. Figures out. Good left hand right there. And that was actually the second big shot he landed in that sequence, and that's why he made that showboat there. And then a good exchange, just back and forth shots. is flying. Both guys letting him rip. And let's see Ben Ticklin a little bit more responsible defensively on the inside. You see how he shoots, he pulls the guard back up. He remembers to come back and bring his hands home. Gallegos, a little bit too high for me on the inside. And doesn't bring his hands back home the way he should. Black and white for Gallegos. Dark blue and gold for Van Sicklin. This is round three. Both guys are putting themselves in harm's way. As they're exchanging, me and Paul are like spritting our teeth like, Ooh. Van Sicklin said pro box is how boxing should be, how fighters should be taken care of. And both men have come in fully prepared for our main event. Fight your way out the clinch, fight your way out. Your hands are free, thank you. Yeah, Team Van Sicklin was very confident in the fighter meetings yesterday. And I, I can see that, you know, he's in great shape. He has a game plan, he's, he's executing. He just has a really tough guy in front of him. Good shot there again, Van Sicklin, that sneaky overhand left. Oh, whoa, big shots from Gallegos. You see again, Van Sicklin, a bit more responsible defensively, not as busy. Goodbye. Some of those body shots again through though by Gallegos. what I mean. It's going to be interesting as the rounds wear out whose approach is, is, is a little better. Is it the smarter approach of Van Sicklin or just the all-out busy approach of Gallegos? Mm. Nice work here from Gallegos. Big swing and a miss. And less punching in between by Van Sicklin this round. Wow. Big shot. Gallegos is doing better at keeping that range once he has Van Sicklin on the ropes. He's able to get his punches off and not smother himself. very proudly representing his hometown of Sinaloa, Mexico. First fight in the U.S. against a talented boxer who took the collegiate route. Nice spin off right check hook there from Van Sicklin. And That's smart. He needs to fight with those angles. And speaking of Mexico, guys, two weeks from tonight, we'll be back live from Mexico. Juan Manuel Watch Marquez your promotions. Watch your way up. Digging body shot on the inside from Gallegos. For a tall guy, he actually punches pretty well to the body on the inside like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think this round Van Sicklin's a little bit more arm weary as well. Ended a good left hand early in the round, but for the rest for the rest of it, it's been a very good Gallegos round. Yeah, Van Sicklin definitely looked like he's slowing down a little bit this round. The pressure from Gallegos is starting to wear on him. Pressure cube. Pressure cube. Ten seconds, this is for the bell. Keeping the hands busy here late in the round. Mm, nice body shot from Van Sicklin on the inside. Right uppercut. Both guys rip him to the body again that round. Three rounds in, and I think we've had more action than all the fights put together thus far tonight. Yeah, here we see Gallegos pinning Van Sicklin on the ropes, which was a, a theme in round number three. And he was keeping that distance, like I said, not smothering himself and allowing himself to get those shots off and, and punch especially well to the body. leaving just enough space. He even kind of switched his stance a little bit from close range so that he was able to keep that space to dig in those shots to the body into the head on the inside. Yeah, you got a 76 inch reach. You don't need to have your head on a guy's chest. Ooh. Round number four. First 10 round fight. 
scheduled for Richard Van Sicklen. The last three, he has gone the full length and won them all by unanimous decision. You talked about the action three rounds in, Chris. Mm. Those two guys early in their career who opened up the show tonight gave us four well. rounds and some fun. Well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The opening, the opening pro debut was a ton of action, but obviously we had a much higher level here in the main event. No doubt about it. David Benavides aside, thank you, Seth Pauly. Many people touting Gallegos as the best Mexican super middleweight outside of Saul Canelo Alvarez. Well, I will say he's definitely the tallest, <laughs> the tallest super middleweight Mexican Aquera. fighter. And he's young, 25 years old. I think Benavides is better than Canelo, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Big left hand by Ben Sicklin. Big shot. Gallego's got a good chin. Oh, look at that! Oh. Gallego said, yeah, you want to lose your mouthpiece, so we can dig in! Wow, Ben Sicklin has not missed a left hand in the last four punches he threw. is tough. Wow. He's hurt. He's really hurt. Did you see the look on Ben Sicklin's face when the mouthpiece came out? He's like, let me knock out a couple of teeth. <laughs> ben Sicklin's having a good time in there. There's definitely teeth. I mean, I'd be shocked if he didn't lose teeth. Time in. I mean, that was some clean shots after they lost losing that mouthpiece. Ben Sicklin has an opportunity here. He should really jump on it. But did he punch himself out throwing all those hard shots? It's been a fast-paced fight. You take the breaks he can get. He's letting guy goes back in. Yep. Benavides is 26, 26 and 0, 23 knockouts. You know, and Paul, you say it, as smart as Van Sicklin has been fighting, he's still putting his nose right in there. He's yeah. fighting the, 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 the puncher's fight. Taking risks, taking chances, getting hit with big shots too. But he's a little subtle thing. You saw that feint about 10 seconds ago just to throw, disrupt the pressure of Gallegos. He's also no wound by Gallegos. He's not tiring himself out with his legs either. He's not moving a whole lot, standing in front. Combination by Gallegos there, good response by Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin looking for seconds, a strong finish seconds. here in round four. Gallegos oh. thinking the same thing. Big white hand. Hooks to the head actually wobbled Van Sicklin at the end of the round. What a round! That was some round, incredible. That's a, that's a, I got it all tied up after four. Hale, two, two. Profundo, profundo, mijo. Yeah, I got a three-one Van Sicklin, but round one was close. That's it. Hale, hale, duermase, cabrón, duermase. That's it. Been a mouthpiece thing tonight, guys. <laughs> yeah, it sure has, Goldie. Oh, good body shot there by. He's making this his team the body attack, but all of a sudden we saw the shots come the mouthpiece come out and Van Sicklin said, you know what? I'm not gonna give you a break. Let me punch out a couple of teeth. I don't see enough fighters do that. The mouthpiece is out. The ref needs a break in the action. Go right after. Yeah. <laughs> Getting hit without a mouthpiece in your mouth sucks. Oh, <laughs> out. Nice move there from Van Sicklin, taking advantage of the opportunity to punch your, your opponent in the teeth without a mouth guard. It's called killer instinct. Yeah. I like it. In England, I in England they call it spite. Spite. <laughs> and if they land, they say it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, brilliant work from Van Sicklin in round number four. Yeah. I mean, really, those left hands couldn't miss. So, Paulie, you you have two two. You said Chris. No, I have two two. Yeah. I got, Paulie, a, I got a three one Van Sicklin. All right. But a very close first round that I gave Van Sicklin. Oh. oh. that goes along with the athleticism that we've talked about all night, possessed by Richard Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin is just, he's so much more precise, and it seems like he's been able to hurt Gallegos more than, than vice versa. He strikes like a cobra. And, and let him go, let him go. And that's been 
and the thing, I mean, again, the smarter work of Van Sickle or the harder work of Gallegos, and we're still wondering which one is going to start to show, its, show the fruits of their labor sprouting some. Right now, it's up for grabs still. Yeah, Gallegos is very workmanlike. He's coming forward, but, I mean, he's been rocked several times in these last couple rounds. But I'll tell you, at the end of the last round, yeah, I thought he rocked Van Sickle. Yeah, after, true. After Van Sickle had a great round. You know, you also got to think about the early body work from, from Gallegos. He's been very consistent since round number one about targeting the body. There we see it again. Well, we have seen in the career of Gallegos, he likes being the bully. Instead of being bullied, which I think anyone would choose. But Van Sicklin happy to bully back. from uh, Team Gallegos coming. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, good body shot from Van Sickle. Yeah, good combination in general. 10 That's seconds, Jimmy, 10 seconds. but he's been getting hit with big shots, leaving himself open. Mix up the right hands. I mean, at this point, he's just winging both hands at any chance he gets. So, hasn't really been doing that all that much. But And don't smother your offense. When he's been having his best work is when he has a little bit of space, especially when Van Sickle's on the ropes. He's letting those hands go, and has been very effective from there. Van Sickle, use that lateral movement. We can set up some shots off that lateral movement, mainly that overhand left at times. You know, also use the back the belt. Win the battle of the lead foot. You know what? On the inside, that counts. I, I haven't really paid attention. He's done well, though. He's done well. And I, I, Don't drop your hands, right? Finish the, the last key. Left hand. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing that. We saw plenty of those. <laughs> plenty of those. So the battle continues round six. Mm, mm. Oh. First yeah, scheduled ten rounder for Van Sicklin. They both are active early in this round. And that's what I mean. Both, both guys want for their keys there. Gallegos with the counter to the body. Van Sicklin with a nice left hand. Both guys, are, both guys executed the keys there. So both guys. Oh. I think both men are executing their game plans. It's just they're literally going neck, neck and neck with them. And, and like you've been saying, Paul, who is who's going to outlast the other? Much like we said with Najee Lopez, the greats find a calmness in being great, but also they find themselves able to be comfortable in very uncomfortable situations in preparation and in live fights. I'm very and that impressed. May be what this one comes down to. Yeah, I'm very impressed with Van Sicklin. I did not expect him to be this tough. He's got a lot of heart. You know, I knew he was skilled. I knew he was smart. But I mean, he's he's showing a, a lot of heart as well. I, I tell you, after what I saw last time, I, I, I knew not to underestimate him. I knew Gallego was going to bring this engine, but man, I, I, I had a feeling Van Sickle was going to land some of these sneaky shots like this. But Gallegos has taken them, and they're they put on another great fight here at Pro Box TV in, in the main event. And in the fighter meetings, Van Sicklin was not incorrect in humbly saying that he has improved since the win over Hakeem Lopez. And he's facing a higher level opponent in Manuel Gallegos. Agree on all aspects. He's, he's definitely improved, and he's, he's, and he's doing it against an even better opponent. Yeah, 
Yeah, the slower the pace, the, the more it helps Van Sicklen. He has a little bit of space. He's able to see and set things up and think. But I tell you, just when oh. you're going to get a break, Gallegos will bring it to you if you don't domesticate him, if you don't keep active on him. Van Sicklen, very intelligent, patient. He'll look to set some traps as this fight continues. He's done so on various occasions already. Going a little orthodox here. 30 seconds left in round six. Yep, I've been watching the facial expressions of both men throughout, and it's 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 very interesting. You know, Gallegos' stone face hasn't really changed his demeanor at all. And Van Sicklen is a little more expressive. You can kind of see he doesn't like certain shots, or he's feeling confident about a shot he landed. <laughs> or that he does like it. Yeah, exactly. You can tell when he's vibing and when he's not vibing. Right, it's a great way to put it. Oh! I was going to say Van Sicklen's going to take this round off, but you know what? Before he took it completely off, he made sure he couldn't give it a big left hand. Was back to the corner with a left hand to let him know, you know what? Well, I'll be back next round for more. Está ahogado, mijo, está ahogado. Ya le vamos a... Tiene que meterle presión. Ya meta hacia adentro a la pinche pelea. Él ya no quiere, está out. Ok, quiero que se meta adentro ya con todo. Mucha presión. Mucha presión, niño, mucha presión. Estar ahí, encima de él, encima de él ya. Ya no le dé respiro. Ya no le dé respiro. Mijo, pero tiene que estar Van Sicklen is spent. Okay. Bring on pressure, encima, bring on encima. all that pressure. They think Van Sicklen is spent, okay. and that's the instructions to Gallegos. Try to bring all that pressure now and finish it. So pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> Especially now that they think he's spent. Again, how do you how do you coach a guy like Gallegos? You just tell him to be pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Bang, that's that shot. That was a shot at the belt. Boom, he went for another again. Best shot of the round, but I thought Gallegos really carried that round as, as I felt like Van Sicklen maybe was using the round to reoxygenate. We'll see this round if he did reoxygenate. Because now after the instructions, Gallegos got, you know Gallegos is going to bring it. Gallegos has rebounded well since the lone defeat of his professional career. Punches in the foot. A win over Kevin Newman, the second. Oh, ten round unanimous decision, and then two stoppages, including the one that he told us was not listed everywhere online. But nonetheless, this is a good start to round seven, as these two men are putting on a show in our main event. Gallegos cannot get away from that left hand of Van Strickland and Sicklin. And he said that he spent a lot of time sparring with good-sized southpaws back at his home gym, the family gym of the Montiel family in Sinaloa. Did he get any right-handed work? Because Van Sicklin has been switching right-handed yes. rather off in this fight. Southpaw work is one thing, but you know, finding an athlete like Van Sicklin is, is a whole nother. Yeah, it's very specific southpaws. And Sicklin's been very tricky, very smart, setting nice traps all night long. Very hotly contested matchup. You know, it, it, it's hard to tell who's got the momentum because there's so many sways back and forth. Those are heavy shots. We yeah. can hear them ringside. And was his corner correct in assessing Van Sicklin's gas tank starting to empty out? I mean, it seemed like that before in other aspects of the round. Actually, I've seen that in other Van Sicklin fights. But then he comes out of nowhere and blasts you with the left hand, hurts you, and, and takes over. Like that. You catch and shoot. Nice little left uppercut up, up the middle. End of last round. Exactly. Busy with their hands in close. Final minute of round number seven, our main event. And Sicklin knew something smart. He was smothering to get some rest yes. as well. And preventing Gallegos from getting off good work. Although Gallegos, nice little step around there. Yeah, we, we spoke about Gallegos, how he's got one speed. That's one thing Ben Sicklin has shown is, is his change-ups. He threw light punches and then, th and then threw a big one.
Very clean. Listen to me. Ten seconds left. But the body shot there by Van Sicklin. I was gonna say, get ready for the big left hand from uh, Van Sicklin. Try to make an adjustment there because Gallego, since I've taken that left one at the end of the last round, it got under some of them this round. So Van Sicklin adjusted it at the end of this round and went to the body with it. This house, okay. Put it right here, right there. Take the pressure. Okay. Listen, listen. We have to start back in the camera, all right. We have to make a stand. We have to make a stand, all right. So Keep pressure him. Body uppercut. Body. Okay, there, so there. Yeah. But finish with the right hook. Okay. All you need to turn and work out the turn, all right. Let's back him up. Where's the mark? My guard. My guard. My guard. Yep. Breathe, breathe, Rich. Pull in when you're back. Working your feints, step back and step right in. Our main event continues round eight. White with a black trim for Gallegos, dark blue and gold for Van Sicklin. He's gonna walk on the football mm. somebody at the University of Washington. I think he felt that. I yeah. think guy fan signal felt that he winced. He reacted, bent over, dropped the elbow. He's taking some hits with guys with pads and helmets on. He's taking some shots from Gallegos in the last few rounds. I'll tell you that. That guy goes corner wet Try and Van Sickle slipped on him. Break! Break clean. I got you. Yeah, draw that corner. Box! Nicely done, Christopher Young. They didn't want to drive that corner. He had to tell them twice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he said, you know what? It worked for us when Wally kept it wet. <laughs> oh, good body shot there by Ben Sigman. He's, he, he's been slowly going back to that. Very impressed with the awareness of Van Sicklin all night long. He's, you know, he's like, oh, I got him with a good body shot, and I got to get I got to get that back. I got to slow him down. Changing up the pace, changing up the distance. Great awareness. If it was a quote-unquote spilled bucket of ice, my longtime broadcast partner Joe Rogan would still be telling the world about it. Fight your way out. Your hands are free. Fight your way out. You can hear the shots land. Yeah, Gallegos is still throwing heavy-handed shots. Not letting him go as freely as he was early on, but still throwing big leather. <laughs> Eighth round, Van Sicklin, Orthodox, Gallegos, fighting long with that left to the body. He's landed it three times, just missed on a fourth. His distance and pace is not where Gallegos wants to fight. Think about here, oh, hot shots shot. from Van Sicklin can steal the rounds. Punch your way out. Punch in the front. There you go. Van Sicklin's got himself good moves. Yeah, the outside is a nice little sharp hook there. And from the orthodox stance, he's left-handed, so he went with that power hand first. And again, that one just missed. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that Van Sicklin's a lefty. That, yeah. that left hand is very good, whether it's in the front or the back position. And Paulie, you've always said about boxers who switch that it's the defensive side of it that suffers more than their variety of offense they can present. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the thing, you usually you, it, it, when guys get in their secondary stances, use their defense. There's some nice little counter there by Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin did a good job of getting himself back into the round there after being hurt badly by the body shot early in the round. I, mean, I, get, I think he won the round. He, he, uh, Gallegos did nothing with that body shot afterward. Meño, tenemos que noquear. Pueden llamar por nocaut. Hay que tirar más golpes, mijo. Ok, tire muchos madrazos, muchos, muchos. Por todos lados, güey. El morro no hay que hacer, güey. Está bien cansado ya. Bien cansado. Jale aire, jale aire profundo, profundo, profundo. 
Vea lo que nos está, cabrón, está cansadísimo, está cansado. Meta hacia adentro, acuérdense toda la chinga que se pegó para estar aquí. Ok, ya lo viste, ya lo viste cómo está. Te quiero adentro de él, encima, güey, como Wina, pero tirando madrazos. No dejes de tirar basically, madrazos. Basically pressure, pressure, pressure. Don, este es el 9 y el 10. Lo puedes noquear en este, si quieres. Here's the body shot you guys were referring to. Yeah, it's a beautiful left hook, landed right on the belt line. You see the wincing in the face from Van Sick, and I mentioned a few rounds ago about it. You can see the facial expressions that he's not really hiding how he feels, and that one, he definitely did not like the way it felt. But then, you know what, Gallegos couldn't take advantage of it, like did you said, champion. Slowed down. Van Sicklin actually made the adjustment and fought a very crafty remainder of the round, and probably won the round. One on a Oh, nice oh. counter there by Van Sicklin. Again, small timing shots yeah, well. subtly well. make the pressure of Gallegos pay. Round nine for the first time in the career of Van Sicklin through eight. Paulie, your scorecard. I got a 5-3, Van Sicklin. I got, I got 77, 75, Van Sicklin. So 5 3 two, right? Yep. Just in the holding. Chris is very good at math, isn't he, Paulie? <laughs> Body and head from Gallegos. Good finish on that combination by Gallegos. I go with the straight shot. Five times you come with good shots underneath the round. Got the guys oh. a good counter by Van Sickle, though. Beautiful shot. Gallegos switching his stance just momentarily to throw a heavy left. He landed it the first time, missed on the second chance. I mean, for a guy with 13 fights, Van Sicklin really pulls the trigger nicely. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice shot again, speaking of pulling the trigger. And the better eye-catching shot, Gallegos is so busy. You know, they, they land, they don't land, they, they rip you apart to the body, they're partially blocked, they get in, which, you know, does wear you out either way when you go into the body and it's with that amount of volume, but Van Sicklin with the nice eye-catching shot. Yeah, between. It just seemed like the way that this fight, the pace that it's been set early on, it was going to be whether Gallegos was going to wear Van Sicklin down. But if it goes the distance, if they make it all the way, Van Sicklin fights this way, he's going to be in control. And a man, Chris, to your point, who found boxing late, age 19, after his college football days were done, went the collegiate route, made the Olympic trials in 2015. And he'd love to move to 14 and 0 and 2 and 0 here on Pro Box TV. Smart way, Van Sickley just created some space while it looked like he was trapped. Went left, went right, oh. a little bit. Just changed the angle a little bit and made Gallegos back off. And now finding the openings in between Gallegos' punches. And that stutter step of Van Sicklin on the counter attack. The corner of Van Sicklin was asking for a lot of the things that he's doing now. Those little subtle shots, the up and around that we're seeing from him. That's that's that was the corner asking for those specific shots. Oh, left hand wow. to the top. Gallegos doesn't really do well with all the trickery. He's trying to be tricky and everything. Guy Van Sicklin's like, you know what? Let me just hit you with a left hand. and Richard Van Sicklin, much to your point, Chris, is they're just going rock em, sock em here at the end of this round. And Van Sicklin got hit with some big shots in there, but just stays in the fray. Oh, good body shot there by Van Sicklin. Oh, 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 Willing to take some in order to give some. Oof, what, a, what a fight, what a fight. Big smile on the face of Van Sicklin, 10th round to come. Big smile, on, big smile on my face too. Every single time we put on a main event here at Pro Box TV, it's fireworks. Good fighters, great fights. Fucking finish strong. We always win the last round, right? Let's go! We always fucking win the last round. this for his mom. He got very emotional. His mom, Mary, 62 years old, had a hard life. Homeless shelters, very poor. Richard's brother, Glenn, turns 33 in a couple of days. Richard said he's the youngest of six. I want to give him an early birthday present. We may find out if he's going to be able to deliver that gift right here in the next two minutes. 
minutes and 30 seconds. That corner reminded me of a football huddle. Yeah. Where they were getting revved up. Last round, fourth quarter. Same, same in that corner, right? Diego's couple sneaky uppercuts. We're about to hit that two minute warning right now. <laughs> Nice. No automatic timeout, though, Paulie. No. <laughs> no, this is boxing. Two minutes. The word that comes to mind for Van Sickle's performance is clever. Very, very clever. Setting traps, aware of where he is in the ring, of the vibe of the fight. Yep. Oh, nice counter there. And that is my worry now. My worry is a lot of judges don't understand this, yep. and they just go by who's following the who and who's pressuring, and they, they judge a fight by who by watching follow the leader as opposed to watching a fight. You know, Gallegos has done some great work this fight, but yes. I just don't think it's enough at this point unless he gets a knockdown. I still think it's a close fight. It's a very competitive, highly competitive fight. I do as well. That's why I, round one, he been sick when it could have easily gone the other way. So the, this fight ha is that, has that kind of score. Yeah, I, I had the first round for, for Gallegos, but I think we, we had other rounds that we were not on the same page for. shots. Man, Sinklin has had those. Probably more so than Gallegos. And again, there's another one. The athleticism of Richard Van Sinklin. Yep, great timing, great rhythm. Pulls the trigger at the right right space. I, I tell you, I would, I would give Gallegos more of these rounds if he wouldn't get hit so cleanly, randomly. Yes, yeah, trying yeah. to fire himself up with a little footwork. Oh, oh. a nice shot by Gallegos. Oh. Final Ooh. 10 seconds of the play. Especially early on, boy, a lot of those rounds were stolen by big shots from Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin's got to be careful going straight back like that. He took him straight back. There you go. That means the matchups are good matchups. <laughs> it's in the hands of the judges now. Main event goes the full 10 rounds. And plenty of highlights, highlights guys. That. Yeah, and then plenty of shots that landed both ways. Good overhand left by Van Sicklin. Gallegos mixing up a good body attack for the majority of the fight. Van Sicklin was able to actually counter some of those with some beautiful catch and shoots. It was, it was good back and forth action throughout. Yeah, this whole fight was a highlight. These guys are going back and forth throughout, but I, I thought that Van Sicklin did enough in those exchanges, was able to steal enough of the rounds, and I think actually hurt Gallegos at least more visibly with certain certain times during the fight. And as the fight wore on, the timing, the rhythm. Gallego started to slow his output a little bit, and big shots like that were landing more and more frequently for Van Sicklin. Yeah, Van Sicklin was able to have the eyes in between, in the storm, you know, like right as the punches are flying, he was able to see the openings in between. Again, oh. the athletic ability, the awareness. But Gallegos was just kind of just going, going, going. And how about the toughness? Yeah. I didn't I didn't expect that from him. I didn't expect yeah. him to be in, a, in an all-out war like this, be willing to trade with a big puncher like Gallegos and, and still come out on top and, and be able to fight your fight. And Gallegos, you could see, is used to wearing guys down. It was probably surprised that Van Sicklin not only resisted, was it was but we're still punching back and timing in between. Good fight.
who will have their arm raised in victory. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 bomb throwing rounds, we go to the scorecards. Jed O'Connor scores about 96, 94, 96 a 94 Gallegos. Tina Griffith and Brian Gary both scored about 95, 95. 95 on 95. We have a majority draw. El combate es un empate mayotaria. <laughs> Maybe we just need a rematch. Nah, rematch. <laughs> yeah, Let's go rematch. Better. That's good. Good fight, though. Good fight. I that's thoroughly better. enjoyed that. So we can we can we can run that back. And the number three is fantastic. Don't forget Wednesday night fight series starts again on January 17th, our first show of 2024. Chris, you got one more thing to say about this or about the app? Well, just talking about talking about the app. Not only do you have all these great fights, we're just highlighting six of the great fights we've had this year. Yeah. We've had way more. This is actually a difficult list to compile because we had so many good fights. But on top of that, there's endless content. There's, there's stuff like this. There's tons of content on the app. It's not just the fights. Me, I'm a fights guy. I love the fights. I love yeah. Wednesday night fights. But these talk shows are a lot of fun, and you can learn a lot about the sport and about your favorite fighters right here. Because we don't just talk about Pro Box TV. Mm -hmm. We talk about everything that's everything. happening in the, in, in the boxing world. So the app is, is well worth it. Yeah, deep water, sparring sessions, all these great stuff. So big night fight. Yeah. Big Remember, night guys, you, big it's night free. Yeah. You know what they say, if it's free, it's for me. Well, it's for all of you. <laughs> Amen free. to that. Amen to that. All right, let's get to the silver medal now. These last two fights have someone in common. Number two is Orlando Capu Gonzalez taking on Ramiro Cesena. It was a matchup of Puerto Rico versus Mexico back in July, a super featherweight bout that ended in a unanimous decision for Capu Gonzalez. Here it is, number two. For our main event of the evening, the 27-year-old from Puerto Rico, four years the elder of his opponent, everything else is virtually identical. Puerto Rico versus Mexico, yes. notice that. Almost yeah. always a good fight. Always guaranteed to be exciting. Will this one follow suit? I'm going to say yes. With the official introductions once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our Pro Box TV main event of the evening. Ten rounds in the super featherweight division. Este en el evento principal, pelea botada a 10 asaltos en el peso super pluma. Los jueces. Your judges, Tina Griffith, Rodolfo Aguilar, and Alvaro Rodriguez. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro Massimo Montanini. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with gold. In la esquina azul, con pantalones negro y dorado, pesando 131 libras, weighing in at 131 pounds. His record, 16 wins, one loss, one draw, with 13 wins by knockout. Con record, 16 victorias, una derrota, un empate, con 13 por la vía del knockout. De Loreto, Baja California, Mexico, Ramiro Dimon Cesena. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black, red, and white. In la esquina rojo, con pantalones negro, rojo y blanco. Pesando 130 libras, weighing in at 130 pounds. His record, 20 wins, two losses with 12 wins by knockout. Con record, 20 victorias, dos derrotas, con 12 por la vía del knockout. De Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, Orlando Capu Gonzalez. Ten rounds, super featherweight fight, our main event of the evening from here inside the Kissimmee Civic Center. Orlando Gonzalez, Ramiro Cicena. Here we go. 
It's time to fight Gonzalez in the black, red, with a little bit of white on his trunks, black and gold for Sasena. Southpaw Gonzalez, 20 victories, 10 finishes. Sasena, the Mexican, 16 wins, 13 finishes. Another Southpaw Orthodox matchup. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Gonzalez has that boxing where he, he'll try to smoothly come in and in and out. Susanna will try to disrupt that with some pressure. Yeah, we're going to see Gonzalez is definitely the more athletic and fluid of the two. Susanna is more of a come forward banger. Yeah, it's, and, and, and interestingly, Gonzalez, despite the having that, that talent, he, he does get aggressive with his boxing. I said get inside and bang right into the body at times. During our fighter meeting yesterday, both competitors talked about that they were mentally prepared for a very tough and gritty battle. So a lot of mutual respect in this main event of the evening. Gonzalez has had fights in his native country, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and here in the U.S. This is his second straight fight in Central Florida. I can see already that Sasena, Sasena has some experience with southpaws. He's throwing his jab a little bit different. He's throwing hooks over the top. He's uh, not been tentative at all dealing with the southpaw stance. And trying to slowly close that gap. He's got a, Gonzalez up against the ropes now. Trying to make those little subtle moves. Taking that ring smaller and smaller, even though this is a pretty small ring to begin with. Trying to finish with that straight left. Gonzalez here early in the fight, round number one. Yeah, that lead looping hook over the top from Sasena is a good move. Oh, you your heads there. They got to be careful. And you can see both of these guys feel like they can win the fight. Yeah, you can see yeah. The body language is, in the, is, is both confident in both of these guys. No B sides here. We got the A and the other A side here in our main event of the evening. 50-50 fights, ultra entertaining. That is our mantra here on Pro Box TV. And already there's a little abrasion underneath the, the right eye of Gonzalez on the strength of those left hooks over the top, which is sent in a couple of those rounds. Ooh, good exchange. <laughs> Nothing hit, but that was they're both they're both coming close. Talked about the fact his father is in his corner and his cousin, Henry LeBron, as well for Gonzalez. And Sisena Chris, his one setback was in his most recent bout against Thomas Matisse. He was ahead on the scorecards, but was finished in the 10th and final round. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great fight, and Sisena looked really good. I was very impressed with what I saw that night, because Thomas Matisse is, is a very good fighter. He's long, he's strong for the weight class, he's a good counterpuncher, but Sisena was given all he could handle, and then just got caught at the end, and it was uh, it was a bit controversial, but, um, you know, he, he, he thought that the fight should not have been stopped, and he should have won the fight. Yeah, and both of these guys have losses to, you know, good fighters, yeah. and, you know, in Sisena's case, it was controversial. In uh, uh, Gonzalez's case, the first loss of his career is to Rubesi Ramirez, who is wow. now a current world champion. And his other loss with... was to Misael Lopez. Yes, and he went the distance with... Uh... Yeah, both of both those losses, he went the distance. Yes. And the two very good fighters, like you said, Rubesi is excellent and a current world champion. WBO featherweight world champion since April of this year, won title defense and a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, he just made a nice defense on the yep. undercard of uh, the uh, Inouye fight. Yep. Yes. And he could be in the running to fight to face in a way in the next year or so. I mean, they're both they're both with top rank. It's a very conceivable conceivable future. And it could happen on a Tuesday morning halfway around the world. <laughs> and I don't mind it. I don't mind eating breakfast and watching fights. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Text each other. <laughs> Give our opinions. Yeah, yeah. We're calling the fight on text. You guys are missing out at home. Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, good yeah, nice left hook over the top. A nice little right hook counter there by, by Gonzalez as well. 
But Cesena is starting to close that gap more and more. And he's putting that mental pressure on Gonzalez. Yeah, it's like I said, from that, from that opening round, he's he's very comfortable with the southpaw position and how to fight them. He, he has a game plan. Nice straight left hand there from Gonzalez. And you can see Gonzalez is trying to make his life easier, create, he's trying to create that space in one way or another. But you're not going to fight Cesena off of you. If you're going to make your life easier, you got to do it in different subtle ways. Right now, if you're trying to fight, if you think you're going to hit Cesena with some shots that are going to make him leave you alone, that's not going to happen. So you're going to have to figure things out here. Cesena is continuously putting that mental pressure. And you can see Gonzalez is sort of in a little bit of an antsy position. That was one thing I remember from that fight uh, with Cesena and, and Matisse. Cesena had a lot of bravado, a lot of machismo. And he was talking in between. He was very aggressive. He was walking through shots, waving his man in. Just over a minute on the clock in round number two. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partners. The former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Malignaggi, former world champion. Chris Algieri, great to be with you from Central Florida. We'll be back at our world headquarters in two weeks. Headlined by the always ultra-entertaining Otar Aranozzi. Gonzalez is either going to have to get some respect or get very, very slick. Because Consena, like you said, champ, is, is closing that distance and putting a ton of pressure. Yeah, and you're not going to fight him off. Like I said, you got to do little subtle things. You got to change your levels. You got to give some feints. You got to, you know, maybe parry his lead gloves a little bit, touch, touch, his, touch him in the lead glove a little bit to measure your distance and then fire some shots. You got to do some little subtle things, and he's not doing them. Actually, Cezanna does them a lot of times. Cezanna a lot of times gives you that level change feint, and, and, and it sort of creates a, a, a panic situation for Gonzalez and puts him in a position to be hit. And Cezanna has a better judge of distance. He's making Gonzalez miss in reach on his way out and that sneaky left hook dude i mean it's i like even it. when he misses it you can see how sneaky it is and again so, right there at the end of the round ball yeah but there gonzalez countered it well with the left yeah. left cross Less than a cup of coffee, 199 a month. Subscribe today to your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. Dad in his corner, his uncle, Luis Perez, represented Puerto Rico in the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta with Jose Miguel Cotto, the older brother of the six-time world champion and 2000 Olympian, the Hall of Famer, Miguel Cotto. Round number three, the South Paul Gonzalez, black, red, and white trunks, Romero Cesena in the black and gold trunks. Gonzalez also has 18-0, Henry Lebron in his corner. I saw him when he was coming. He just had a, a win last month. He's cousin. There we go. Very, very talented fighter. I called a few of his fights for, for top rank international. Ooh, ooh, good exchange. Starting to heat up here. Round number three. Oh, good body shot there by Cesena. Gonzalez with a long left. And you see Cesena, look where his head is, right underneath the chin of, of Gonzalez, trying to make him miserable. And again, Cesena landed a good left hand, but it's not going to be enough to make Cesena. Uh, Gonzalez made a good left hand, but it's not going to be enough for Cesena to leave him alone. Which is going to mean he's going to need to land the punches plus do the subtle things. Yeah, since I mentioned the bravado and the machine. Oh, big left hand. Good exchange. But the problem is the more you hit Cesena, the more he wants to fight. Yeah. So if you want to, you're going to make it this kind of fight where you're going to only, oh. Ooh, buckle the hook, Right hook. Check hook caught him. Gonzalez pouring it on here. I think the Dallas decided, all right, I'm going to accept this fight. That's it. You want to fight? We're just going to go at it. This is the way you want to do it, and we're just going to go at it. And both guys in the fighter meeting said they expected this type of battle. And I think that's smart. I had said last round, Gonzalez, the way things were going, was either going to have to get respect or get very slick. He decided to get respect. And that's the thing, Gonzalez, I had noticed even in, in the videos of him, he's a boxer, but he likes to be uh, aggressive with his boxing. And there, he was able, he's managed Ooh. to be able to do it. A little, nice little uppercut there by Susanna. Both guys now having a, a good action-packed round. Yeah, we got, a, we got a war breaking out in round three here. Y your typical pro boxing event. Yep. You got that right. Right on cue. 
We got ourselves a fight. Oh! I think the center could count the lights on the ceiling from that shot. He popped his head back like a Pez dispenser. Puerto Rico against Mexico. Set at the top of the show. It will be entertaining so far. The delivery has been outstanding. Is Gonzalez ready for this kind of fight, though? Because you right. see, the more you hit the center, the more pressure he's bringing. Are you ready to go with this kind of fight? So it's a round he may be winning here, but you see who's controlling the ring. It's still Sassani, good despite the, despite the fact that Gonzalez is probably controlling the ring. Since, uh, uh, I mean, since that is controlling the ring, Gonzalez has, has landed the better shots this round. But are you going to be able to win rounds like this continuously through the next seven rounds? It is an exhausting way to win rounds. And he's looking very uncomfortable, especially these body shots coming in from Sassani. How about we just make every... Pro Box main event, a Mexican and a Puerto Rican, because they pretty much can't miss fights. And a Mexican who, when he gets hit, he bites down on the mouthpiece and gets angry. I mean, never seen that before, right? You mean a Mexican who's Mexicaning? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you see some of that action here. Good combinations there, but good exchanges by both. But you see the the better, the, the shorter punches are thrown by Gonzalez. So in these exchanges, a lot of times, it's Gonzalez is going to get the better of them as he's the shorter puncher. And you see it right there with the shorter shot with the left hand. That's the one he can counter this lights on the ceiling, Chip. Yeah, there, there it is right is. there. There's a the left hand. And he gets out there. That was a nice little move because use that left cross to not just land a good shot, but also to slide around. And as he's got to do, he's got to do these kind of little subtle things to buy himself some breaks and buy himself some time. He won that round. But ultimately, it's an exhausting way to win rounds. And for me, even though for me he won that round, he's still not controlling the ring. And once you take control of the ring is when you're able to at least win rounds and be able to pace yourself accordingly. Right now, he's going to win rounds the way he just won them. It's going to be an exhausting fight. Is he ready to do that, though? Yeah, and, and like you said, even though Sassan did not win that round, he actually looked more comfortable in yeah. that round. This round pace this number four, guys. The pace was there, right, Chris? Yep. So more of the same from Gonzalez. Well, he's got to keep that distance. He's got to, like, like the champ said, he's, he's, he's got to use those pot shots to get his, to make an escape route. Because when Sassana is putting that pressure and putting him in the corners, that's not the place he wants to be. He's not comfortable there with his back against the ropes. See a little faint there by Sassana. Again, you see, even though Sassana kind of rough around the edges, he does use all the subtleties. Good change up in speed there from Sassana. So Zena said he's ready to give the fans a show. Looks like he's got a perfect dance partner in Orlando yeah, yeah, Gonzalez. Three fights, three finishes. This our main event of the evening. Oh, good body shot there from Sassana. One of those strafing shots that we talked about a couple fights ago. Those body shots that kind of scrape you and sometimes hurt more than a solid shot. Interesting thing about this round thus far, Gonzalez has not let himself get back up to ropes, but he's losing the round at center ring. Yeah, he's getting a box in the center now. Weird. Three fights, two finishes, just a ultra entertaining performance by Maybe. Mandeep Jandra. Mm. Again, that sneak left hook, it's so sneaky. Canelo does that too, yeah, that sneak left hook, either, where it looks like a jab and then all of a sudden it turns into a hook. And then Sassana just turns the corner afterwards. Sassana's having a very good get back round after that last round. Just 23 years old. He considers the USA the mecca of boxing. Nice head movement there from Sassana as well. And a nice left hook from him as well. He's gotten that going. Interesting round, man, because you would have thought if this fight started to go at center ring, Gonzalez would have the better of the action. It's almost like Gonzalez is like, I feel weird at center ring against this guy. I was, was got so used to him chasing me. Nice body shot there by Gonzalez. He's going to get a warning for low blow, though. Must have been a bad one because Sassana was having a really good round. I, I would think he would not want to take a break. You okay? Oh. Sassana oh. wants to. They want to go. Get back in there. Boom. 
And a big combination and a heavy left hand thrown by Orlando Gonzalez. Again. Final seconds of round number four. Gonzalez is trying to steal the round, but then Susana's coming back with some big shots himself. Capu looking to close back, this back. one out. Go back. Go back. Gain the numbers on the judges' scorecards. Uh, and take a look to see if that low blow was actually a yeah. low. Yeah, that's low. <laughs> and it was. The sentence is telling the truth. Like I said, he was having such a good round, I would think he would not want to break any action. Yeah, and he wouldn't want Gonzalez to get a break either, because you see what happened when Gonzalez got that break. He came out punching right off of it and tried to steal the round. Yeah, Gonzalez has a sneaky check hook in, the set, in, in between the combinations there that's been catching Sasena, and also that straight left hand that's been popping his head up. That would have been right on the selfie of Steven Galliano, by the way. Yeah. And that's that's a first, guys. <laughs> selfie on his own trunks. Yes. But don't forget, it's not a selfie if it's uh, you and I, Paulie. Ted Lasso. We learned it's a nussie. It's a nussie. <laughs> oh, nice left hand. I mean, dude, Gonzalez is walking right out the center ring. He just <laughs> nailed the sense of Zeno with a left cross. Round number five, main event of the evening. Orlando Gonzalez, the Puerto Rican in the black, red, and white trunks. And now we use the left hook to set up the right hand. You saw that? Mm -hmm. Susana sneaky. Did it again. Did that hand put it down to the body. Susana in the black and gold. That sneak left. Do you see how he does it? He's, now he used that sneak left hook to set up a right hand instead. This guy's rough around the edges, but he's subtle, man. He's, he's sneaky. Oh, good overhand left uh, right there from Susana as well. Susana 9-1 and one in his last 10 fights with six finishes. Yeah, I was very impressed when I saw him in San Antonio. He, he, he looked much better than I expected him to against a very, very tough guy. Oh! Left hook hurts Gonzalez. Punched in between him. This is why you punch in between. This is why you don't do your turn, my turn. Yes. Gonzalez throwing a nice combination, and Susana punches in between him and almost brought him down. I mean, Gonzalez, his knees completely buckled, and now he's trying to survive the, this onslaught. That shows you the strength of Gonzalez, the way he caught himself without going down. That, that shows a lot of conditioning. And Susana was smart. He went right back down to the body immediately with the right hand. And Susana still very aggressive. He knows he has his opponent hurt. And you talk about making your life miserable. I was saying this kind of pressure, this kind of pace makes your life miserable. Mm -hmm. Makes it even more miserable when you're hurt. Oh, oh body, body shot. shot. I feel that one at ringside. Yeah, no, no, Gonzalez no. is looking I'm very behind. uncomfortable here. No, no. Nice. Good answer to the body oh. from Gonzalez. Gonzalez hurt him with a right hook. And now he puts together a combination. And they want to go. What a main event. Sneaky uppercut by Susena. Both these Answered by Capu. You hear the crowd, and you can hear the crowd. They are into this one. How can you not be? Yeah, I'm into this one too. <laughs> it's a great fight. Oh, cut over the eye of Susena. Oh, another right hook to the chin. Well, this flower is definitely Ari Bud. And this oh. fight just gets better and better. Oh, they says, stand cut, and try. Cut. 30 seconds. <laughs> These go type back, of fights are what Pro Box TV is all about. Oh, good oh, sneaky oh. finish there, Chris. Yeah, this is one of those fights you do not want to go get a beer during. You want to stay here and watch. Because these guys are banging. Mm. Oh! Well, they both told us they were mentally prepared for the deep waters. And they're going there. What a round. I mean, the, 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 pretty much the whole round is a highlight. There they trade right hands. Looks like Sasana got the better of it. Here they are on the inside. And that was the left hook that caught Gonzalez high in the head and buckled him. He didn't go down. He didn't touch. And that was his right hook that he came back with. Yep. This made him say, come on, let's go. See, he's going to say, 
There it is. Puerto wow. Rican pride. <laughs> say, come on, vamos. <laughs> they both speak the same language, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a fight. This is a fight. Our main event of the evening. A combined 36 wins, 25 finishes for Sasena and Gonzalez. Round number six. Mm, wow. Counter right from Sasena. He loaded that one up. Partially blocked by Gonzalez. Both fighters had eight week camps. They both said they came in healthy. And you can see the effects of a good camp and two hungry fighters. And again, Sasena going body head. Yeah, if you're not going to punch him between Sasena, he's really going to open up on you because he's also very creative with the way he he selects the shots. Nice combination there by Gonzalez as well, though. Finish with a nice sharp jab. And although Gonzalez got, got hurt last round, he looks more confident coming into this round. And Gonzalez fighting here in Kissimmee tonight. Seventh fight in the Central Florida area, in the Orlando area. Sixth here in Kissimmee. So not quite a hometown as it is present day for Blast. Mmm, good change up there from Susana. Jabs low, throws a rain and high, but I faked. He looked down and punched up. Oh. But a second home as a fighter, oh. as they both throw hard. Center ring here, 120 on the clock, round six. So Senna needs to be careful. He needs to get that left hand back up because that right hook, he's just not seeing. Gonzalez comes forward. That's one thing about a guy who's got a creative lead hand. A lot of times that, that shot, that, that hand isn't there to protect yourself. You've got it out in front so much, you're throwing it a lot, you're looping it. And Gonzalez has had a home for that right hook over it. Yeah, nice little double left hand by Gonzalez as well. 22 bouts, Gonzalez has never been stopped. Went the distance in both of the bouts in which he was defeated. Sasena finished just once. Tonight is 19th professional fight. I'll tell you one thing, you got to credit Gonzalez. Since that round that he won when he had to spend it all on the ropes and he had to work hard, he, he hasn't really gone to the ropes a lot. You know, he's, he's decided to keep this fight at center ring for better or for worse. At times it hasn't been great for him at center ring, and at times it has. It's going well for him this round. Gonzalez is boxing well. He landed some good, snappy right hooks. Yeah, you always, are, either way, you want to keep it at center ring because, you know, you give yourself more options. See, so Susanna now wants it all in the phone booth. And Gonzalez is saying, nah, I'm going to change range on you. The action, two-way exchanges. Nice little right hook there by Gonzalez in between the shots of Susanna. See a little double left cross. The second one lands even better as Gonzalez goes straight, as Santa goes straight back. See the shots there as well. Gonzalez is just a little sharper there on the inside. Well, let's see if it's the fatigue of Sasena that may be catching up. Sasena is not returning that right hand to home. And Gonzalez is found a home for that right hook over the top. And Gonzalez very animated in his corner. Feels like the momentum may be going his way as this main event continues. Scheduled for 10. This is round number seven, the Southpaw Gonzalez. Black, red, and white trunks. Ramiro Demon Sasena in the black and gold trunks. The confidence of Gonzalez has grown round by round.
Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. And Gonzalez has started to take notice that Cesena goes straight back a lot of times when he throws those straight punches. So what he does is, did, you saw what he did there, he threw three or four straight straight punches, you know, with both hands. There he just did it again with a double jab left hand. And he's, he keeps catching Cesena on the end of it because Cesena goes straight back when the, you throw straight shots at him. And it's not, this, you know, that's one of the things they teach you in boxing, don't go straight back. But a lot of times when you see straight punches coming at you, you know, you want to go straight back. It's your tendency to go straight back. You got to fight that feeling off and, you know, slip to the side. Or get underneath like Cesena did there. Yeah, the natural inclination is to pull away from a punch that's coming at you. But boxing is anything but natural. Midway point of round number seven. Two weeks from tonight, we will be back at our world headquarters. Mm, good leaping left hook. Over the top. I was just going to say a moment ago, Sasena got away from that lead upper, uh, lead left hook over the top, and he came right back to it and stunned Gonzalez once again. When in doubt, oh. Oh. And you see, that's the shot selection I'm talking about. Yep. Good, good hook there by Gonzalez. But you see, Sasena gets you from underneath and around the side. When he gets his hands going, Gonzalez has to punch in between there. And a good, good job by Gonzalez to do that and counter with that right hook. Probably that uppercut that split the guard from Sasena was nasty. Yeah. Sasena threw a nice body shot there, too. I think that stunned Gonzalez as well. But Gonzalez comes back fighting off the ropes. Nice move off the ropes by, Ces by Gonzalez. He needed to do that. Although Sasena puts him right back on the other corner. Tonight it's Gonzalez and Sasena in two weeks. It'll be the Georgian Pitbull, Otar Aranosian, and former WBA Super Featherweight World Champion, Venezuela's Roger the Kid Gutierrez. Oh! Big swing and a miss. Big right hook lander on the inside from Sasana. Gonzalez took that well and comes back with his own. We have got ourselves an outstanding main event as we had hoped and anticipated. Good two-way action here. Oh. So the final bell. They can go and keep going at it. Three rounds to go, man. Just an amateur fight away now. <laughs> <laughs> right, by Goldie's math. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. Holly with that finish right there. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can counter that one, Chris. Yeah, we see a beautiful left uppercut on the inside. Champ, you're talking about the, the punch selection from Sasena. He mixes things up, but it's that right hook. Whenever Sasena gets a little too confident with his offense, Gonzalez cracks him with that right hook. There, there's, there's that uppercut up the middle. That's a nasty shot. I like how Gonzalez tries to get the last word, though. You see, Susanna throws, and Gonzalez tries to at least respond back before they separate. So at least he leave it in the minds of the judges who finish the combination. It's smart. I don't know if it's going to win him the fight. We got a very close fight here, but, but sometimes just those little subtle things keep you standing out in the minds of the judges. Susanna had a, some very good combinations that round, though. Such a competitive fight. These guys are going back and forth each and every round. Susanna comes right out right away there. I'm shooting that straight right hand to the stomach. Judges have their hands full in this one. Yeah, don't don't ask me what, who's winning this fight. I'm just enjoying it. There you go. <laughs> I'm just enjoying it. This is great two-way. Well, we just go with who's winning the fans here on Pro Box TV. Because we have an entertaining main event. Yeah, this is one of those fights, man, where it's tough to <laughs> it's gonna be tough to judge it. And we still have three more rounds left, which yeah. is yep. which is great. I'm, I'm, I don't want this yeah. fight to end. Yeah, which is an maybe, amateur fight. And yeah. maybe it'll be easier to score after <laughs> these next three rounds. We'll see. That's true. Maybe maybe someone will be able to separate themselves and show themselves to be the clear winner. Mm. Sisena, the aggressor thus far here in the first minute of round number eight. Flipping a nice pile of sweat our way. And again, Sasana going straight back there. Gonzalez managed to get himself off the ropes for just a second, but now he goes back. Nice body shot there by Sasana. Gonzalez changing levels, trying to land with that combination. This round, Sasana is making Gonzalez waste the energy. He's landed the good shots, although Gonzalez picked, just as I say that, picks a nice spot to throw two good punches. 
And neither guy wants to give up too much time or momentum to the other. They come right back. Just an outstanding southpaw against orthodox fighter. Matchup, especially with that check hook thrown by Gonzalez. And Gonzalez has the punches with the less fat on them, and he can let those combinations go. <laughs> Saying, no, no, no. Keep going. Whoa, big nice swing and a miss with the overhand. Nice Rick. defensive move there off the ropes by Gonzalez. Both of these guys, it's funny, they're, they're both tactical, but it seems like Gonzalez is a little bit more, more athletic. And Cicena is, a, yeah, it's clean, exactly, man. And Cicena, with the subtlety, he's very interesting, man. He's got that nice left hook, uses those foot feints well. Uses those sneaky uppercuts on the inside. Good body shot there. Right into the elbow of Gonzalez, and Gonzalez comes right back. Ooh! Oh! Got his head snapped back on that one from Cicena. Gonzalez has to be careful on the out, not to get hit with punches. He's been, he's been taking a couple of shots this round as, as he gets uh -huh, out. Uh -huh. Rick, go back, go back. I mentioned in between last, the other previous round that he's, he, he does a good job of getting the last response of the judges, like right there. And sometimes when you, if you're getting hit while on the out, you no longer got the, got the last response. That was a nice little shoe shine. Not a whole oh, lot anyway. That sure did. Big left hand. Late in the round, landed by Gonzalez. Yeah, that was nicely set up with a foot thing first. And a flurry at the finish of the round once again. And again, those, those shots at the bell can really sneak, sneak it your way. Goldberg, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri, main event of the evening has delivered in spectacular fashion. Orlando Gonzalez and Ramiro Cicena. Ninth round. The Southpaw Capu, the Puerto Rican, Cicena in the gold and black. Again, showering us with their hard work. Combination by Capu. The body shot by Cicena that brings him back, brings Capu back to the ropes, and now he's following it up with a good combination. And again, that sneaky uppercut. That uppercut did not sound pretty. Oh, and a body shot. Senna has started out this round on fire. Yes, he has. I see where the nickname El Dimon, the demon, come from, comes from. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, 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 oh. Body shots right in front of us. Oh, and a right hand off the chin of Sassena from Gonzalez. Mm. Mm. Gonzalez might be hurt here. Hey, 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 hey. Get into the body, Chris. Yeah, Gonzalez looking, look, does not look good. Looking a little woozy. Oh, remember he did a good job a few rounds back to, to hold on his feet. And, and that's something that could make a difference in the fight. Who knows? Oh, he was oh, able to stand up. shot too. But he's gonna have to stand up here in this round. There's still he's, half around to go. Yeah, he's, he's, these last 90 seconds have been really rough for Gonzalez. He's getting hit with everything. And that uppercut again from Susana. Right hand or left hand splitting the guard. And Sassena does not forget to go back to the body. Sassena's not the easiest guy to clinch either, man. He does a very good job of creating the openings. You see Gonzalez's feet are woozy, man. Gonzalez has never been stopped. And that's it. Yeah, with, with, Sassena, that, with his punch selection, makes him very tricky yeah. to defend. And he's just a guy who oh, makes oh. him miserable on the inside. 13 of his 16 wins have been finishes. The demon just walking forward and letting both hands rip. Man, digging the right hand to the body and the left hook and those uppercuts up the middle. Back comes Gonzalez, but Cicena still walks him down. Oh, Again, big uppercut. uppercut. The good the chin on Gonzalez. Trying to rip those buds off the flower from Puerto Rico. And he is taken over here in round nine. 
good chin on Gonzalez. I'll tell you, man. Even the way he uh, stood up a few rounds back when he was almost yeah, going down. Him into legs. He has not gone down this round as well. Taking some clean shots. Oh, even some hard body shots. This has been the most dominant round by either man. Sasena yeah, came out strong and has just poured it on. 15 seconds now left in the ninth. Gonzalez trying to get some to land. Is, is Gonzalez saving it for the last round? I'll tell you what, he saved for the last 20 seconds. Wow. What fight. Mouth is How good is this? this? And Gonzalez's mouth spitting blood. Gonzalez took a lot of damage that round. Here we're going to see some of the action. Gonzalez pinned against the rope, pin, pinned against the ropes here, and Sasena opening up in that uppercut. And those uppercuts like that, that are the reason Gonzalez's mouth is so full of blood at yep. this point. I'm you, Gonzalez did a good job to hold on his feet in that round. His feet were woozy there, as you can see in that replay, as he was oof, trying to get from one side of the ring to the other to catch himself a break. That uppercut again, that thing was a beauty. And but despite thing all these replays, it started to be Gonzalez at the end of the round. He saved it, and he started fighting back, landing some good shots. Jeez. Hit for tat. These guys going back and forth with bombs all night long. Does Gonzalez have anything left in round 10? Or did he shoot it all out in the last 20 seconds? Respect by both guys. 10th and final round. Three minutes remain. You saw after the touch of gloves, Gonzalez backed up right away, and Cesena went right to him. Stepped right to it. Gonzalez trying to stay busy, even with his back against the ropes. Wet and bloody at wing, ringside. That's one thing. It's been uh, miserably hot in South Florida this summer. So late in the fight, these guys are pouring sweat. It's hot in that ring right now, too. The action is hot. It's was hot. Oof. And again, Gadal trying to land that combination and get out. Trying to give the judges that, that, that last vision. Gonzalez is smart. He's taking the power off the shots. Susana's walking in the front door, and he's just letting his hands go like that. Ooh. Another landing. Left hand to jaw of opponents to Senator Gonzalez. I'm just going to say right now, whoever wins this fight, the other guy's going to feel like he got robbed. Yep. He he got got this is a fight where both guys it. are going to feel like they won the fight. Yep. It's a shame back, somebody has to lose it. If, in fact, there is a loser, because it could also be a draw, right? Yeah, very true. Good point. In which case, they'll both go up. <laughs> yeah. Either way, somebody, at least one guy's leaving the ring unhappy. Just past the midway point of the 10th and final round of our main event of the evening. Nobody else is leaving this room unhappy, though. Jeez, this is some fight. It's been a good night. Oh. See, again, Gonzalez, not, not an easy guy to, to clinch. You see, Gonzalez trying to clinch him, but Cesena does not accept it and somehow finds their openings. Yeah, he punches over and around the clinch. A lot of blood coming from the mouth. Yeah. And that was all up about, dude. Yeah. Those Under are, a minute. And Cesena, only 23 years old. Oh, jeez. Big overhand right on the inside from Cesena. I was going to say, those uppercuts, those are jawbreakers. Oh, look at the fast hands from Orlando Gonzalez. Yeah, dude, shoe shining, but actually landing good shots. Rick, stop. Go back. Come back. Go back. A little arm weary. In this 10th round. So, so do we send our dry cleaning bill to the winner or the loser? Careful, Luther. You have it. The blood inside the mouth of, of Gonzalez. Again, you can see the effectiveness of the uppercut says Anna landed all night. Oh. They are going to fight to the finish. Blood and guts from both these men. Oh! Wow. I'll tell you, they're going to sleep good tonight, man. Wow! What a great fight! They go the distance! What a fight. I want to see this again, dude. I was I'm you know, telling what? you right now, I don't, it doesn't even matter who wins to me right now. I want to see this again. This is, what a fight! Paulie, when you were talking about unhappy, happy, I'm thinking, 
again here on ProBox TV. Either way, we run it back, and we thank both fighters for bringing it tonight. When you're talking about your fights of the year for 2023, yep. sometimes fights like this fall under below the radar. This was a fight. Here's the replays, and there were plenty of great shots landed by both men. I mean, the whole fight was a highlight. These guys yeah. were back and forth all night yeah. long. Blood yeah. and guts. Yeah. Heavy punches landed. And I tell you what, man. I, mean, I, I, I don't think you're going to have a conclusive winner here, no. man. And you're going to have a decision, but you're not going to have a conclusive winner. This could easily be a fight that is fought again. The fight was not taken out of either man. No one, no one separated themselves. Although, Susanna had the most dominant round yeah, in, of round the fight, in round nine. Yeah, but it still only gets you at 10-9 round, right. unless it's a knockdown, right? Mm -hmm. So, And a good job by Gonzalez in about round four or so when he was almost down and he stayed up. Because yep. now that, 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 been it. that extra point could, have all, could also make a big difference on the scorecards. Action packed from start to finish. Let's see when to recap this fight. But like you said, champ, this is... This whole fight is a highlight. Yeah, just watch. <laughs> we don't even have to talk over this. Yeah, Pro Box TV, man. We keep trying to tell you. And if you guys, the, for the ones that are subscribed and the ones who do tune in, you know, you guys know already. This is kind of the norm for the kind of main events we give you. And a lot of times the whole card is, is this good. But this was our extra special one tonight. We've given you guys good fights. Well, we know our motto is mm, good fighters and great fights. That was that shot there. It almost brought Gonzalez down, but he managed to stay up. Good fighters and great fights. This is a prime example of good fighters and great fights. When I had first heard about this main event, I, I remembered Gonzalez, Orlando Gonzalez, who's, I knew he's a very good fighter. I had forgot that I had seen Ramiro Sassena. And then when I found that it was him, I was like, oh, man, we got this a really a good fight. Yep. And I was telling you, I was like, this is a really good fight. I've seen this kid. Yep. And sure enough, they lived up to it. And you put together the right styles, which we try to do our best here at Pro Box TV for you. You put together the right styles, and you're going to get action fights. And that's... Again, for those of you for for those of you that have been loyal to Pro Box TV and have been watching our cards over and over again, you guys know. I mean, this is this is the kind of fights we've been giving you and delivering to you. Look at that exchange at the end. Look at that combination by Gonzalez, and it was it was rough and rugged shots. He had with his blood flowing out of his mouth from the, the uppercuts that Susanna landed all night. I mean, what an action fight! Gonzalez got trouble chewing food for the next couple days. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're not going to have trouble is sleeping tonight. Judges have rendered their decision for our main event of the evening. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 head snapping rounds, we go to the scorecard. Tina Griffith and Rodolfo Aguilar both scored the bout 96-94. 96 on 94. Alvaro Rodriguez sees it 97-93. 97 on 93 for your winner by unanimous decision. El ganador por decision unanime. Orlando. Thing. One thing I'm going to tell you, you fight in Orlando, you basically are in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay, a lot of big Puerto Rican uh, population. When I heard 97-93, I knew Susanna wasn't getting it. I knew. I know. I, I knew. I already knew the cards. Because 97, I, nobody won this fight 97-93. So as soon as I heard 97-93, I knew there was some one. There was one jerk off in there that had to, that had to, that had to do it. And I was like, all right, all three judges gave it to Susanna. I don't have a problem with either guy winning. But but yeah, you know, Gonzalez winning. Yeah, what a fight between Capo Gonzalez and Ramiro Susanna, number two on our list of the best of 2023. On our Wednesday night fight series. All right, ESPN analyst Tim Bradley, what did you make of this fight between Capo Gonzalez and Cesena? Again, it goes back to you got a technical boxer versus what? A pressure fighter. Cesena was a beast, man. And he set up his attack. When I watched him fight, he was he was somewhat crafty. You know, he would use feints. Um, you know, he would disguise when he was going to attack, you know, and, and it kind of caught, I would say, Gonzalez off guard a bit. You know, um, Gonzalez, good southpaw, can box well, but again, he didn't have a jab. He didn't have a solid jab throughout the night. So, Sensana was just coming through that front door, man, applying that pressure, but I, I like the way he was doing it. He was doing it extremely smartly, and towards the back end, things got a bit rough for Gonzalez. Gonzalez was able to pull the win off, but, man, what a hell of a fight. You know, what what guts that I would say Sensana showed throughout the course of the night. 
uh gonzalez again we're gonna see him again on this list because he just doesn't know how to be in a doll damn fight i mean he loves to fight you know that puerto rican blood you know these guys are tough they like the brawl they got a lot of heart you know and then let's talk about sensana mexican fighter likes to bring the pain as well but a great entertaining fight i would say for the fans um, and you guys sounded really excited on that call, man. I can just tell you that much. All right, Chris, what did you make of that fight between Gonzalez and Cesena? Well, I'm listen, sure. every time you get a Puerto Rican and a Mexican fighting, mm -hmm. you're going to have an all, <laughs> you're gonna have an all out war. And it was that kind of yeah. night. And it was in Orlando, which is like basically little Puerto Rico. Yeah. So that place was loud. That's why we were so excited being ringside, Poli and I. Um, I mean, it was super loud in there. And that's one thing about Gonzalez. He, He's really good. He's very technical. And he doesn't have to be dragged into these fights, but he kind of allows himself to be. And he also f fights to the crowd. He likes, he likes when the crowd gets excited. He gets excited, and it creates that much more action. And I had seen Sasena in his previous fight, and he was out boxing a very, very tough, good punching Thomas Matisse and got stopped late you know, in a, in a situation where a lot of people thought that it was an early stoppage. Um, I thought he was ahead in that fight. So I knew coming into this fight that he was an excellent, excellent fighter. I actually thought Sasena was going to win. Orlando Gonzalez, I had seen him. I knew he had only lost to really good fighters. But I just thought that Sasena, from what I saw in that Matisse fight, was going to be able to bring that pressure and put it on him. But, man, Gonzalez really impressed me. And that was the first time I had seen him live. Obviously, I had seen him again since then. But, I mean, fantastic fight, back and forth. Paulie and I said it that night. We're like, we really don't know who won this fight. They were, I mean, they were both exceptional that night, putting tons of pressure on each other, back and forth, ebbs and flows. Both guys got hurt at certain points. But, uh, but all in all, I mean, uh, an excellent, excellent fight. Great matchup. And once again, like I said, Puerto Rican and Mexican, it's go. a can't miss. Yeah. What do you make of that fight, yeah, Paul? And, that, and that's the thing. My, my, my two uh, uh, cohorts here, uh, the two champs, Tim and Chris, they both made some good points here in, 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 the, in the last couple of fights because it's really uh, one point Tim made was these guys got to win. Uh, when he's talking about Van Sicklin and Gallegos. And then these are all our great fights. That's why we have such great fights. We put guys in positions where they got to win. They're right there. They're, they're hanging on by a thread to the top, to the certain level where they can get to a high level or they can fall to a no man's land. They got to win. You know, you're right there. Sometimes your career puts you in that position. And when you put two guys who are at that level, typically they know how to fight. That's why they're there to begin with. Because if they couldn't fight, they would be way at the bottom. We wouldn't have them here, right? So they're right there. They both know how to fight. And then they got to win. It's, it makes them more hungry. And then you add what Chris said. Puerto Rico versus Mexico, you get a, something like that. Whether at, at all levels, there's a sense of pride when it's Puerto Rico versus Mexico at all levels. And the crowd, you know, Tim, Tim mentioned about how, how we look like we had fun calling that fight. Bro, when the crowd is that alive, yeah. when the fight creates uh, the, the, the juice in the crowd, the, the energy in the crowd to go that crazy, I mean, bro, it's... It's easier to call the fight, man. It makes our life easier. It, it, the, the, emotion, the emotion trains like Except to us Except we can barely well. hear each other because it's so yeah. loud in there. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. the emotion, you just want to bang your head. I want to bang my head on the desk sometimes. Like, whoa, this is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's that kind of fight, you know? And that, that night was that kind of fight, man. I mean, you had all the emotions. You know, I've been part of big Vegas crowds, big part of stadium mm -hmm. crowds. But sometimes even these smaller shows, man, these shows we give you here, the, 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 listen, the, the noise bounces off the walls, and it goes absolutely insane. And the two fighters, they feel that energy, energy as well. And uh, that, that night, you really had a, a really, really entertaining fight. Yeah, the fight and the energy made it very memorable here on Pro Box TV. All right, the number one fight of 2023 it is going to be, well, Capo Gonzalez again. But this time in <laughs> November against Jorge Castaneda, the number one fight on our Wednesday Night Fight Series on Pro Box TV. Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Gonzalez, 28 years old. Castaneda is 27, three inches shorter, but the reach is virtually identical. This one for the WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight title. And once again, we get it up in the ring to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our Pro Box TV main event of the evening. Ten rounds for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight title. Your judges, Rose Lesen, Rodolfo Aguilar, and Tito Wilgo. And your referee in charge is Michael DeJesus. 
Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the orange and blue, he weighed in at 128.6 pounds. His record, 16 wins, two losses with 12 wins by knockout from Laredo, Texas. Please welcome Jorge Castaneda. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks, he weighed in at 130 pounds even. His record, 21 wins, two losses with 12 wins by knockout from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Orlando Capu Gonzalez! <laughs> If tonight is anything like the night we saw back in July with Gonzalez and Susana, buckle up, set for our main event of the evening. Here we go. It's time to fight. The Southpaw, Orlando Gonzalez in the white trunks. His opponent, 27-year-old Jorge Castaneda in the orange and blue trunks. Gonzalez training at the Atlantic Boxing Club in Puerto Rico. An Atlantic Boxing Club in Long Island, no? Yeah. Oh, good right hook over the top there. You have the Something mountains in the beach and the one in Long Island, Paulie? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Maybe some beach. <laughs> Maybe some beach. Orlando trained by his father and also his cousin, Henry LeBron, 19-0 as a professional. It's Mike Murphy's gym, right, champ? Yep. Atlantic. Atlantic boxing gym out. Yep, out on Long Island. It's on the Atlantic. <laughs> oh, yeah, technically, yeah. yeah. Technically. <laughs> oh, sometimes Goldie. <laughs> I know. Come out with some good ones. It's that big brain, right? <laughs> yeah. You're on tonight. We said, I said it, man. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> It's that age, it's that other, the, another year yeah, of wisdom. Another year of wisdom. We're saying, you were saying uh, uh, geography before, right? And yeah. now, and now mathematics, oh no, mathematics and now geography. And cryptocurrency. Yep. <laughs> Trifecta. Talk about a man of the world. Man of the future. Oh! A little sharp counter there by Castaneda. Yeah, that left hook over the top. Great weapon against the southpaw. Castaneda, 12 of his 16 wins, guys, have been by knockout. And Castaneda, you know, with that height, can get you reaching in. So if Gonzalez doesn't negotiate that that, that distance the right way, Castaneda has, will have opportunities to catch Gonzalez coming in. Yeah, and we spoke about... Oh! They are going at it early here in our main event. Gonzalez trying to make short work of Castaneda. And we mentioned at the top that Castaneda has been stopped in his two losses. And he's kind of a slow starter at times, guys. Yeah. You know? He did get stopped in the first round a few fights ago. But part of that is because he's in there trying to win. Oh, man. Good check hook. Yep, finished in a minute and 35 seconds by Eduardo Rocky Hernandez. Good counter to the body by Gonzalez. Gets a warning from referee De Jesus for being slightly low, but he's thinking. He's thinking in there. He's not just head hunting. Although Castaneda, despite taking clean shots, is the one trying to stalk. I don't think he knows how to do anything else, honestly. This is the way he fights. Gonzalez doing a great job splitting the guard of Castaneda. He's got that high guard coming forward. Good start for Orlando Gonzalez. Was hurt, 
got hit with some bigger shots after that. The right hand, left hand again. He's having trouble getting away from the left hand. Right through the middle. I mentioned Castaneda fights with that high guard, comes forward, gets a little square at times, and Gonzalez took advantage of that. Throwing those shots right down the middle, threading the needle with the left hand. Gonzalez wouldn't mind a short night of work. Just four finishes in his last 11 fights. Eight of his 12 finishes came in his first 10 professional fights. He's the southpaw on the white. Castaneda in the orange and blue trunks from the border town of Laredo, Texas. First career loss for Orlando Gonzalez was to Robesi Ramirez, the WBO featherweight world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist. Another loss was to Misael Lopez. Oh, man, that left hand. Gonzalez really has found a home for that thing. Yeah, and it's a counter, good counter left hand, too. He tries to time Castaneda's long jab with it. Castaneda stopping right in front, right in, right in position to get hit with that shot. There he pulls away. As he got, I think Gonzalez at times can be caught reaching when he's trying to lead with that shot. So what he does, he actually land, does a, the best job of landing that left hand on the counter. And Castaneda gives up his own height trying to throw. And Gonzalez, and Castaneda does do that at times. Yeah. And Gonzalez trying with that check hook. We saw that in the Sasena fight. Yep. He used that quite well. Looks like he's throwing a little bit wide here early on. I'm telling you, I can see the power in Castaneda. He does have heavy hands, and Gonzalez, is, even though he hasn't really been touched with anything too big, you can see the concern in his face when Castaneda lets those hands go. Yeah, a lot of times these tall guys, they'll have that leverage, those, that driving shot. Eight-week camp with Marcos Caballero in Coachella for Castaneda. Family business for Orlando Gonzalez. Blood from the nose of Castaneda, which I'm not surprised. That thing swelled up right away when he got hit last round. And, 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 and Gonzalez has landed some clean left hands down the middle. Dad and Uncle Luis Perez, professional boxers. Uncle Luis represented Puerto Rico at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Oh, that's with, uh, that with was with Miguel uh, Miguel's, Miguel's older brother. brother. Yeah. Yep, yep. Jose. Oh, just that check hook. Yeah, good combination. It was a little bit slappy on the hook. But, uh, didn't turn the knuckles over, but still a good shot. Oh, that's that a good shot. Bad. Wow. And down goes Captain Yeager. Legs stiffened up badly. Good double hook there by Gonzalez. Textbook combination, body head. I don't think Castaneda understands what's going on. The ref's telling him, show me, put your hands up and show me you can fight, and he's not putting them up. Into the round. He may get saved by the bell. His legs still out there. from Gonzalez here. Right hand, left hook, uh, right, right hand hook to the body with the, yeah, to the body boom, there, boom. and then right to the head over the top. Big shot. Yeah, right to the temple, champ. Castaneda was in a world of trouble. Yeah, and that's what it is, when it comes automatic. You see, he didn't think about it, he did automatic. Touch to the body, and touch to the head. And Castaneda, two up high. You see, Gonzalez, a good shot. Castaneda gets too close, but he keeps his height. It's good to have a height if you understand your range, but when you get close, you've got to kind of bend your knees a little bit. You can't be up that high, especially when you have the height of a guy like Castaneda, it's even more. And especially when you fight as square as Castaneda does, being tall and square, you're just you're a big target, even though you're a thin guy. And we were talking about how he's been stopped in both of his losses. He does not take the best punch, so he's got to be make sure to be defensively responsible to, to prevent himself from getting hurt. And the crowd here tonight at our Pro Box TV World Headquarters loves Orlando Gonzalez, who has fought seven times in Orlando, Florida. This is 13th fight here in the United States. Orlando's a lot of Puerto Ricans. Yep. Oh, Gonzalez being smart, not not 
ignoring the body shots either, landing some nice left hands to the liver side of Castaneda. Orlando said he welcomes tough matchups, big challenges, never shies away. Very excited to be back on Pro Box and really thrilled to be here at our Pro Box World Headquarters and off to a good start with the second round knockdown of Castaneda. Oh, big left hand over the top, straight right, a straight left hand that time. Oh, to off the, the feint too, nice combination. Off the feint, froze Castaneda and then dropped the two punch combo. This is what I like about Gonzalez. He can be classy and a killer at the same time. Hey, he's thinking in there. Yep, absolutely. Technically, technically fundamentally, well, good. Good speed, good snap on his shots. And he's a thinker. Castaneda, though, man, he's got will for days. He puts himself in position to be hit, though. He's got to be responsible as he's pressing. That's another thing. When he's hurt, he goes right to throwing punches, and that's when he gets clipped a lot. Well, he's got to have something if Marcos Caballero is training him in Coachella. But Gonzalez off to a great start here in our main event. Another thing that Gonzalez showed in that Sasana fight was a great gas tank. That, yes. was, that was a tough, yeah. fast-paced fight for 10 rounds. That was a fun, fun fight. Yeah, yeah, you got to get better coming off fights like that. Those are the really fights that really reveal a lot about yourself that you may not even know, you, things you may not even know you had inside. I made my friends and family watch that fight afterwards. <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> oh, again, nice. that counter left hand. Nice job getting the head off line there. Again, threading the needle with that left hand. 28-year-old Orlando Gonzalez. This is his fourth fight at 130 pounds. Setting nice traps as Gonzalez. Stops on a dime, Ooh, fires again. hard shots. Ooh. December 13th with a 10 round super lightweight main event Montreal moving to the Sunshine State. Baruzan Jukimbaev from Kazakhstan fighting out of Montreal 21 and 1 will face off against Mohamed Mamou, born in France, now living and training in beautiful Montreal, Quebec, Canada, plus Kelvin Davis, Naji Lopez, and Dominic Baye. Wednesday, December 13th, right here on Pro Box TV. Round number four of our main event. Is the moon still with uh, Roy Jones as well? I, I believe so, yeah. Mm. We, when he made his debut here on Pro Box TV against Cesar Francis, that's when he got his jaw broken early, yeah, but they went yeah. the distance. And then he came back on our air on the undercard of the Susana Gonzalez fight. That's right. And got a big win against an undefeated fighter. Oh! That'll be Kazakhstan by way of Montreal against, against France by, by way, way of Pensacola. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Both. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to put in a request to the merchandise department that we get Pro Box uh, blankets to cover us from the blood that we get in these fights because... You getting hit? Not yet, but I'm, I, I, I sense it coming on. That nose yeah. is, is, is leaking a little bit. Get some Pro Box bibs <laughs> for ringside. Well, he has his BYB smock. Yeah, yeah. I, for, I forgot that one. You know, I gotta, I gotta use it here too. <laughs> unless, well, unless well, the, the merchandise department from oh. get, gets the memo from the champ Chris over here. Good body shots here by Gonzalez again, champ. Like you said earlier, he does not neglect the body despite the success he's had to the head. Or Paulie will just put anything he can in front of him, like Sunday night dinner, his entire life. You know, we we, we, were, we just had Tarek Zana just get a win on the under, uh, in the co-main event here. He should watch a guy like Gonzalez. Yeah. He's got great lateral movement, stops on a dime, still lands power, and doesn't exit before he lands his shots. 
very good classy stuff from Gonzalez here. Yeah, we're very well schooled. If Anderson Silva's precision was precise, Orlando Gonzalez's oh. versatility is versatile. Oh, good right hand there from Castaneda over the yeah. top. Yeah, he can again. Pressing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo. He caught Gonzalez a couple of times there, guys. You know, pressure bust pipes. Castaneda has not stopped coming forward. Some of that pressure may be starting to pay off. I told you, I saw it in that first round. Gonzalez did not look comfortable when Castaneda was punching. Some guys just have that crack. And Castaneda rebounded from the first round TKO loss to Rocky Hernandez by finishing Nestor Medellin in the eighth and final round back in August of this year. Is Castaneda turning some momentum around here, guys? Round four? Castaneda's one of those guys. If you hurt him, you better get him out of there because he's going to come on late. He's undeterred by getting hurt and getting dropped badly. Trying to make up that point right here, right now. And then again, Castaneda getting all kinds of fired up. We got ourselves a fight! Don't bite standing up. Stay bent over. Work the first 60 seconds. Stay calm. Turn up the pace in the final two minutes. The advice from Orlando's father, Orlando Gonzalez Sr. Has Castaneda figured something out though? Is he gonna start the round with high pressure to, that will that may not allow Gonzalez to work calmly in that first minute? But also is that gonna open him up for the power shots of Gonzalez and the precision punching? White trunks for Orlando Gonzalez, 21 and 2. Jorge Castaneda is 16 and 2. He is in the orange and blue trunks. Southpaw Gonzalez against the Orthodox fighter Jorge Castaneda. And, and champ, the answer is yes, of course. That's why they're here to fight him. That's why we have him on Pro Box. Exactly. So they can walk right into each other's offensive weapons. That's why the matchmakers have made this match. Yep. You got that right. Even fights that start out one sided end up being fights. <laughs> The A and the other A side. Exactly. Oh, nice short right hand from Castaneda down the middle. Gonzalez responds in kind with his left hand. Well, I said if this is anything like the fight we saw in Kissimmee from Orlando Gonzalez and Romero Cicena, we're going to have ourselves a lot of fun and starting to heat up. Oh, boy, man. These are heavy shots from both guys. Castaneda just gets so square on the inside. Standing in the pocket and trading. And we spoke about how Gonzalez has great boxing ability, but tends to bite down and fight even when it's not in his best interest. Kapu, a nickname given to him by his mother, a flower in which the petals have not yet separated, but another of his nicknames is the Golden Southpaw. Puerto Rico oh. coming on strong here. Two up high on the ropes. One minute. So work diligently in the first 60 seconds. Turn it up in the next 120, and that's exactly what Gonzalez is doing here right now. Both sides of the body, Gonzalez. Right hook, then left hook. Castaneda returns fire. I like that right uppercut to the body that Castaneda is throwing. Right, getting right between the elbows. There it is again. Those shots suck. They hit you right in the solar plexus. You think you're going to block it and still gets through. Mm. There it is. Right liver there, side. Chris. Oh, yeah. oh, that was the liver side. Here. 
Turn into a phone booth for you, fight guys. I'm not mad at it. Oh no. Nobody's on their bike in this one. Yeah, Zayna used enough of the ring for uh, for a couple of different guys last fight. <laughs> I think it probably says it. Knockdown in the second and some punishment in the last round from Gonzalez to Castaneda. Wow. Castaneda again, too up high there against the ropes. So you want to keep a small target when you're up against the ropes. It was a good exchange in that round, too. We get some good replays for Gonzalez, but Castaneda's been dishing some out as well. Yeah, that round especially. It was a back and forth round, even though all those replays were for Gonzalez. Castaneda did not have a bad round either. Round number six, our main event of the evening, scheduled for 10 for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight Belt. Tell you when Castaneda went down a few rounds ago, you didn't think he was gonna go much longer, right? Very true. And the way that Gonzalez came out in round number one as well, Paul. Mm -hmm. No, until that point, I mean, it, was, it looked like it was gonna be a short night, but at some point, Castaneda got pissed off. Can we say that? Yes, yeah. you, you, just, you just did. <laughs> and that was it. Now we got to fight. Didn't somebody just said, let's have a dog fight. We have one. Who was it? Uh, uh, Mr. T and Apollo when, when, uh, when uh, in the corner, Apollo, uh, Apollo and uh, uh, Paulie are saying, is he getting hurt? No, he's not getting hurt. He's getting mad. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Castaneda got mad after getting dropped. I, I keep wanting to correct some of the, the technical flaws of Castaneda, but I don't think it matters. That, he doesn't care. He's here to fight. Pulling back straight. He's tall. gets tall along the ropes. It doesn't matter. He's just here to, to land punches. And Marcos Caballero said he's a good fighter, good technique. He actually listens to the corner. And much like you said about Gonzalez, the trainer of Castaneda said he knows when to box, when to move, and when to really get in and brawl. And we've seen it all for both guys. Definitely got the fighter's will and mentality, does Castaneda. He was in a, he was in a world of trouble and got up angry. And has been pretty consistent and having some good, good rounds these last few. Clubber Lang reference from Paulie Molinaggi. <laughs> well, Clubber was in the ring, but Apollo and Paulie were talking in the corner. Yep. <laughs> oh, good left hands there by Gonzalez. That's something that he has managed to keep finding. Just hasn't hurt Castaneda as much as he did earlier. To the body. Gonzalez getting back on that good lateral movement, stemming the tide and the pressure of Castaneda, picking his punches much better now. Chip, you got a point though, because Castaneda landed a right hand there and Gonzalez went away, you know? Like, when, he doesn't, when he gets it, he's like, all right, let me reset. Right, yeah, let's, let, this guy's hands are heavy. Let's, let's, let's keep it moving. I mean, listen, there's no comparison in terms of boxing abilities here, but Castaneda is just a ton of will, he's tough, and he's got power. Ooh, okay. And you can't teach hard. Oh, which double left hook there from Castaneda. Body head combination. And again, you see he lands and, and, Cas and Gonzalez like, all right, the exchange is done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not trading. Final seconds of the six. Oh. And another left hand lands. Well, Castaneda gets hit and he's like, nah, I want to exchange. Loading up on the left. The double right hook from Gonzalez was a great shot back in round number two. There we saw the double left hook from Castaneda landed beautifully along the ropes there when he had Gonzalez backed up. Grandfather first took him to the gym at age seven. Gonzalez, as I mentioned earlier, from a fighting family, his father and his cousin 
Henry LeBron, 19 and 0 with 10 knockouts in his corner again here on Pro Box TV. Our main event continues. Gonzalez, the southpaw in the white. Castaneda fighting out of Laredo, Texas in the orange and blue trunks. And Dallas slipped in his own corner there, too much water. If it was a bucket of ice, Rogan would be going crazy. <laughs> Castaneda again trying to dig into that rib cage. Nice body shot from Castaneda. Slip that in right into the elbow. Yeah, because you know what, Gonzalez can't be slippery to the head, you know? So Castaneda. Oh! Body shot there by Gonzalez. Any one good body shot deserves another, right? That was a killer body shot. Castaneda took it well. Man, he's tough. But you see, Gonzalez, good body shot again by Gonzalez. See, Gonzalez can be slippery on the inside. So Castaneda smart to go to the body. You see on the head, the head shots, a lot of them mm. all able to slip. Double uppercut, body, body, answered. You know, what is with Gonzalez, I think he just loses focus at times. And when he's when he's dialed in, he's really difficult. Those shots are beautiful, sets them up beautifully, but sometimes gets into these, these exchanges and doesn't get the better of it always. Yeah, educated shot selection as the tape is loose here on the glove of Castaneda. And you see the corner of Castaneda frantically because they, they, they understand that they need to keep the pressure on Gonzalez. In that rebound win that I mentioned after Castaneda was finished quickly by Rocky Hernandez, he said they worked the body very well, combinations, and got Ooh. the late finish. And he's starting to work the body and the uppercuts here. Good upper there by Castaneda. After that round two knockdown, who would have thought we'd be here in round number seven? These guys fighting in a phone booth, back and forth. Oh. Combination. Snap the head back, Castaneda just gets angry. Castaneda. together. Castaneda's punch resistance got better after not getting knocked down. Right? <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes you get knocked down like that, you think guys get concussions, and they, they, but man, his punch resistance got better. Castaneda said, I just love everything about boxing. I love to fight. Which also makes me think in that one round knockout loss, what if he would have survived that? Yeah. Come back. You know, yeah. he's, the, he's that kind of guy. Well, like you said earlier, if you hurt him, you want to get him out of there because he's going to make your life a bit more difficult if you let him last. He's making Gonzalez's life hell right now. Blood from the mouth of Gonzalez, a little mark under the eye of Gonzalez. Oh, big shots from Gonzalez. As, as they get more fatigued, defense is a little more sloppy, and shots are starting to land more and more for both guys. And this is where Cast Castaneda wants to be. Coming to fight, a fight of attrition oh. here. Nice little body shot, oh, right to the liver. Beautiful. And that southpaw stands from Gonzalez on the counter. And then the combinations there. Again, Gonzalez has a tendency to get straight up high at times on the inside, and Gonzalez taking advantage with those shots. But Castaneda comes right back punching. He takes some better as the fight wears on. Again, that was another replay, really focusing on the Gonzalez, but Castaneda landed some really big shots that round as well. Well, you want to talk about being in tough. Last four opponents for Castaneda, a combined record of 58, one and two. Yikes. He's gone three and one in those four fights. And we saw Gonzalez last opponent to Cesena, so neither of these guys have been in that soft, you know? No, not at all. 
and he, he's also got a loss to Rebasi Ramirez. So both of these guys battle tested as they come in here tonight at the main event on Pro Box TV. The center with 16 1 and 1 going into the fight. That potential fight of the year candidate in Kasimi, right here on Pro Box TV back in July. Good combination from Castaneda. A little phone booth style right here, guys. Gonzalez needs to, needs to be careful stopping in front and letting Castaneda work. You see Castaneda has a tendency to be up high, though. Gonzalez may also be waiting for a shot to time that. Good body shot by Castaneda. He backs up Gonzalez. And he loves digging that left into the ribcage of Gonzalez. And I remember from that Cesena fight, one of the punches that was very effective against Gonzalez was uppercuts, yep. especially the lead uppercut. And Castaneda just found his. I think he heard you, man. Just threw four in a row there. It's a great weapon against the southpaw, the lead left uppercut. A lot of times they dip right into it. Yeah, there's something to that, because Castaneda hasn't thrown one all fight. He just threw about six in a row. There's another one. And another. If it works, keep doing it. Quick hands from Gonzalez. Oh, man. What a fight. Let's go. Oh. Battle of attrition. What more do you want? Oh. If it's anything like we saw in July, it might be that and then some. Go tell your friends. Wednesday Night Fights, Pro Box TV. Every main event is a classic. 30 seconds, round Whoa. eight. Gonzalez. Trying to turn it up in the latter part of this round. What Again, drama. Casting it up high, takes those shots. Aye. You can see Gonzalez gritting his teeth whenever Casino lets those hands go, whether they land or not. Again with the uppercut. And Gonzalez is not looking great. If you find a punch that lands, keep going to it until it doesn't. One, two, three, four. four. You know what? I want to keep trying this one. That's right when you had mentioned the uppercut. But, he, but guys, he's on the other side of the ring. So if he has hearing, I mean, this guy's got like oh. a, the hearing of a dog if he heard Chris Algieri say well, no, the he uppercut. Actually, he threw one and landed a good one. And, and then I saw you said it, it bothered Gonzalez, so I said it. And then he went back to it five, six times. Kept going back to the well, and he, he caught a right hook for it, but. Round number nine, scheduled for 10. This is close. Gonzalez, 21 and two. Castaneda, 16 and two. Vacant WBA, Continental North America Super Featherweight title will go to the victor. You know, I don't know how close this actually is on the scorecard, but it, it does seem like Castaneda could win this fight almost by knockout because he, he, he has Gonzalez very uncomfortable the last four minutes or so. Will that early 10-8 round turn out to be a difference? I mean, I would have Gonzalez ahead. I think he's done more and better work for more rounds. But Castaneda is really coming on. Tons of pressure from Castaneda. And now he actually cuts the ring off quite well, Castaneda. He's doing a good job. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great well, he's certainly fighting with that sense of urgency, much to your point, Chris. 
And Gonzalez is trying to manage the time here in the ring. You know, he's trying to take that advice that his corner had given him early in the fight by taking the first minute easy and then fighting the remainder of the round. But right now, he's at the halfway point of this round. He's trying to still take it easy. Yeah, but Champ, no jab. He's just nope. allowing Cassier to walk him down and walk him. He's still working very hard, even though he's not punching. Finally, he's spitting out blood. The inside of his mouth must have a bad cut because it's been seeping out of his mouth, and they're just there when he tried to breathe out. A bunch of blood spit out by Gonzalez. Well, I actually remember that happened in the, in the Susana fight as well. There was a yep. lot of blood from the mouth that night. Those uppercuts. Oh, man, Castaneda is just Gonzalez digging Gonzalez holding on tight. That body shot. Yeah, he might. He's just looking to take this round off. Good shot there, though. This move by Michael DeJesus, the referee, to get out of the way. He's quick on his feet, too. Castaneda is the one applying the pressure. Talk about the conditioning of Castaneda, man. Listen, those knockdowns take a lot out of you, and he's, he's looking strong, got a lot, of, a lot of energy. Just stalking Gonzalez oh, you know. here late. Mexican fighters, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's in the true. genetics. Mexico against Puerto Rico never seems to disappoint. I think Castaneda would be smart to take some of the power off of these shots, let his hands go, set his punches up a little bit, because Gonzalez is still being slippery. And landing shots like that. Oh, good body shot there oh, from yeah, Castaneda. I think it hurt him. I yeah, that hurt him. Yeah. And a flurry right in front of our broadcast position. Yeah, Gonzalez is suffering through the end of this round. He's getting out of there. And that body shot hurt him, guys. Final seconds. Well, left hand. All right, he says vamos in Spanish, and he lands again. I think he's better off fighting. <laughs> and he yells back. <laughs> you know, when you get kind of hurt, and then you land a good shot, it gets you psyched up. I, I can feel that energy from, from uh, Gonzalez. You know, you, you feel good about yourself. Like, all right, I got hurt, but they take this back. So you can see that body shot combination there. Champ, you said it perfectly. Nah, he was already that. Yeah, he already took it by then. But that was a follow-up combination to that body shot. You said it. He's suffering through that round. It, it yeah. looked that way. I, I've been saying it all night. He's making faces whenever Castaneda is punched. I'm like, I think this guy can hit, and we're seeing it. You, know, you said the corner told him to take that round off. I think he did better off when he was fighting. Took less damage. He's got to. He's got to fight. Because Castaneda is there to be hit. So they're going. Yeah. Three minutes remain. Oh, man, I bet you this, I have a feeling this round is going to be all out. Buckle up. <laughs> Gonzalez in the white. Castaneda in the orange and blue. Opportunities for Gonzalez to use that jab just to stem the tide a little bit. Oh, headbutt there by Gonzalez. Bite down on the mouthpiece and leave it all in the pro box ring. Castaneda looks like he wants a 15 rounder tonight. Yeah. Still hitting hard. You can hear it ringside. Oh, man. Good exchange. I was going to say, where's that uppercut from Castaneda that he had two rounds ago? I haven't seen it since. There, there yeah. it is, another one. Yeah, he's got more energy Ooh. than body shots. Dang it. Oh, Double, triple, 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 triple hook. Oh, great job by Castaneda. Oh, that Here body shot. Oh, comes right back. A big answer by Gonzalez. See, Gonzalez trying to manage the time, trying to fight in spots, while Castaneda trying to fight consistently. Oh, oh. Oh, good body shot. Walks him down, lands again. Punches and bunches. Gonzalez does not want to be in this ring any longer, nope. man. But you see, he tries to save it up. He tries to move, 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 and then, yep. and then try to put together a, a, a nice salvo. And usually the salvo looks good. Yeah, just being smart, being smart. But Castaneda trying to take away the rest in between so that he has no salvo to throw. Castaneda wasting time. Oh, I'm a good uppercut. He went back to a champ. Yep. Will it be enough? No. A couple of times now he's gone for the clinch just to try to manage the time as Gonzalez this round. Well, the latter rounds, the statement is made more often by Castaneda. 
You always think about that when the judges render their decision. I'll tell you what, man. Castaneda might start slow, but it is an end slow. No. Not at all. You guys are right. He's ready for 15 rounds. Man, if you hurt Castaneda, you better hope you get him out of there because yeah. this guy is a nightmare in these later rounds. Oh, boy. Out of the southpaw stance, man. 30 oh seconds. Gonzalez bites down, throws back. Oh, look at Castaneda. What a main event here on another Wednesday night on Pro Box TV. Gonzalez is being very tough, very slick, very smart. sleeping tonight. <laughs> Jeez. Once again, it's in the hands of the judges. Good start for Gonzalez, and he scored the early knockdown. It was such a good start. You didn't think that this fight would, was going to last that much longer. But not only did it did it last that much longer, but you ended up having Castaneda having a lot of good rounds as the fight progressed. There is a, after this shot right here, I mean, you thought this fight was on the verge of being over. And it might have been if there wasn't a right at the end of the round, right, Jim? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I thought the fight was over. I didn't think Castaneda was going to be able to recover, even with the one-minute rest. But boy, did he ever. He really came back in those middle rounds, showed some good technical proficiency with the offense. But, I mean, Gonzalez, just so slick, so smooth when he lets those combinations go, finds the opening great. But, man, Castaneda found the left hook to the body, the left uppercut to the chin, put a world of hurt on Gonzalez as the rounds wore on. There we see one of those beautiful body I mean, shots I, I, once again. I think it even took Gonzalez by surprise, the way Castaneda was able to not only resist the knockout, but survive the knockdown, but, but then uh, come back and make a very tough fight out of the whole thing, you know? Castaneda seemed to get stronger as it got later. Yeah, absolutely. The it toughness, became, conditioning. It became a real fight of attrition as the fight wore on, and both guys put on an entertaining display for the fans. We love to bring you guys here at Pro Box TV, guys. Listen, I, if, if we can keep Gonzalez here for a while, let, let's do it. He's always in good fights. Yeah. Let's make sure to keep Castaneda here as well. Judges have rendered their decision. Gonzalez or Castaneda? Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 back and forth action packed rounds, we go to the scorecards. Rose Lassen scores about 95-94, Castaneda. Rodolfo Aguilar scores about 97-92, Gonzalez. And Tito Wilgo sees it 96-93 for your winner by split decision. And now the WBA Continental North America's champion, Orlando! start for Castaneda, I think I ended up costing him. Aguilar, the judge, probably missed a good fight tonight, but the other two judges. Well, Capo Gonzalez getting a split decision victory over Jorge Castaneda in our number one fight of 2023 here on Pro Box TV's Wednesday Night Fight Series. All right, Chris, what were your thoughts and impressions of this one? Because this one was amazing as well. Yeah, I mean, I think some people might look at this and be like, oh, just because this is like the most recent one, that's why it won. No, it's because it was the most dramatic yeah. fight of the year. I mean, back and forth action. It looked like Castaneda was out in the second round. Yeah. And it, on paper, it kind of seemed like it was going to be that way too because Castaneda had been stopped early on in, in his career uh, by other fighters, but very, very good fighters, mind you. Um, and Gonzalez is a very, very good fighter. He put him down hard. I haven't seen a guy go down that hard and then get up to fight the way that Castaneda did afterwards in a very long time. That was super impressive. He gets dropped flat on his back at the end of the round, gets up, and then roars back in the middle of rounds, almost mm -hmm. dropping and stopping Gonzalez late. So when, the, when they were talking about the decision, I'm like, 
I don't know, man. I if you if you look at the scorecards, yeah, Gonzalez has that early knockdown. He was really he started really strong, but Castaneda has been coming on really strong late. Was able to hurt Gonzalez. Had him really running and holding on towards the end, really trying to get to the final bell. But I mean, what a fight! Back and forth action. Gonzalez just can't be in an easy fight. He just he just yeah. can't can't let it happen. <laughs> no. There were there were points in this fight. He could have made this easy. He could have got him out of that earlier. He could have put a little more pressure. He could have boxed a little bit when he started feeling the pressure. Nope. He stands and fights. He doesn't mind getting hit. Uppercuts all day long from Castaneda had had Gonzalez hurt multiple times. I mean, this is just a barn burner through and through. Gonzalez can fight on our air anytime. Yeah. Well, come back. Yeah. Please come back in 2024. We, we like you. Yeah. And, Paulie, what did you make of this fight between Capo Gonzalez and Castaneda? Another great one here. On well, you know what? Uh, uh, Castaneda is from Texas, but he's Mexican, Mexican blooded as well. So, yeah. you know, you get that Puerto Rico Mexican. I'm telling you, man, it doesn't, they don't even have to be born there. It's just, it just that, that kind of rivalry it just seeps in. It's in their blood already. So, even in the bloodline, it just seeps in there. And again, it just, they just make for great fights. It's not just a stereotype. And we, we've got our top two fights on this list are proof of that as well. Castaneda, one thing uh, Chris said, you know, he'd been stopped earlier in his career uh, early on. Here's the thing. That, that goes to show you just how dangerous Castaneda can be. If you, don't, if you yeah. hurt Castaneda, you better get him out of there because he's got a little bit of that Felix Trinidad syndrome in terms of if he, he may go down, but if you allow him to continue into the fight, he's going to come back pissed off. And then, and then, well, then you got a lot to deal yeah. with, as, as, as Gonzalez found out. That's why it's our fight of the year, man. Total great momentum changes. Again, these are the typical fights we have here on Pro Box TV. We look to really match up these styles. Gary Jones, the, the president of the company, is very, very adamant about matching certain styles and, and make that make exciting fights. The matchmakers, yep. Ryan Scalia, Daniel Rubin, and Chris Glover, really have their hands full when in terms of making sure they find the right style matchup. There's a lot of really good fighters at this level, but you're making the right style matchup so that the fans get the most satisfaction. That's why you got to download the app, and it's free in your app store. Yeah, it certainly is. Very impressive with the, the fights and the cards they have put together on Wednesday Night Fights. All right, ESPN analyst Tim Bradley will give you the final say here on the Capo Gonzalez Jorge Castaneda fight. Again, the style matchup. I, I want you to really pay attention to the style matchup. You have the, of, of course, you have the, the technical boxer, so to speak, that like to use his legs, use, you know, use angles, very athletic. And again, you got to have that pressure fighter. You know, it's like it's like, you know, uh, uh, cold water and, and, and hot water mixing together. You get what? A tornado. Right. So at the end of the day. So um, this is another great fight. I, I mean, I watched this fight three times already. Uh, for me, I thought it was the best fight uh, on Pro Box this year. Um, you know, I can tell you this. A ton of 50 50 exchanges. Very little tie ups. That's what you get. Very little holding or tie ups in 50 50 matches. And, and matches that are wars like this, entertaining fights. Um, you know, both these guys came into this match with a made-up mind already. You know, I alluded to it earlier. You know, you, you don't want to lose. You know what I'm saying? You've been down. You, you, you know, you've lost before in your career. It's the reason why most of these guys that come into this, this into Pro Box, they either don't have a promoter or they were with a big promoter and they got dropped because they lost, they lost a couple of fights. You know, so... They're put in a position where they got to show up and they got to show out. And you got to have a made-up a made mind already. And you got to say to yourself, I'm willing to endure whatever it takes to get the victory tonight. And that's what we saw from both these gentlemen. They were willing to endure whatever it took to get that victory. As you said, champ, you had Castaneda that got dropped. But, dude, how do you get dropped and get up and fight harder? <laughs> you have to have a damn made-up mind. And he had a made-up mind. What a hell of a fight. And what a hell of a way to end the year. It's, it's like uh, Paulie told Apollo in Rocky Three. No, nah, no, nah, he's not getting hurt. He's getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yep, Back. that's how it goes. Yep, yeah, You know we couldn't end the show on, uh, we had to end the show on a movie reference. You know how we do here on Pro Box <laughs> TV. Yeah, Tim Bradley, ESPN analyst Tim Bradley, once again, thank you very much for your time. We always thank appreciate you. your insights here on the program. And we look forward to hearing from you in 2024 as well. All right, gentlemen, that's going to do it for the best of 2023. And remember here on Pro Box TV, the best fighters that did not sign with other promoters are here on your boxing network. Evenly matched action packed fights with the best fighters fighting each other. Good fighters in great fights. We are making boxing free. Download the app at the Google Play Store and Apple App Store as well and where all apps are available. It is free. So go ahead and download. And don't forget our first Wednesday night fight event in 2024 will be January 17th 
And you can watch it on the app, YouTube, wherever apps are available. It is going to be great, man. 2024 is going to be fire. And we still got a lot left in 2023 to share with you all here on Pro Box TV. <laughs>